English conversation on the topic wishes. Hey, what's one wish you have for the future? Hum, that's a good question. I think my wish would be to travel to all of the places on my bucket list. That's a great wish. Where do you want to go first? I've always wanted to visit Japan. The culture and scenery there seem so fascinating. That sounds amazing. Another wish I have is to get a job that I love. That's a great wish too. What kind of job do you want to have? I'm not sure yet. But I want to find something where I feel like I'm making a positive impact in the world. I completely understand. I think another wish of mine would be to have a happy, healthy family someday. Ah,、oh, that's such a sweet wish. I hope it comes true for you. Thank you. I hope all of our wishes come true someday. Me too. I also wish for good health and happiness for my loved ones. Yes, that's a great wish. I think it's important to cherish the people in our lives and wish them the best. Definitely. What's another wish you have? Hum, maybe to learn a new skill or hobby. I've been wanting to take up photography for a while. Oh, that's cool. I wish I had more time to practice playing the guitar. That's a great wish, too. Hopefully, someday we can both make time for our hobbies. Yes, that would be awesome. Wishing for positive things really helps us to focus on what's important in our lives. English conversation on the topic weddings. Hey, did you hear that Sarah is getting married next month? No way. That's so exciting. Where's the wedding going to be held? It's going to be at a fancy hotel downtown. That sounds like a really nice venue. Do you know what the wedding theme is going to be? I'm not sure, but I heard that the colors are going to be white and gold. Those are classic wedding colors. Have you picked out what you're going to wear yet? Not yet, but I've been thinking about getting a nice dress for the occasion. That's a good idea. I've been meaning to go shopping too. Speaking of shopping, have you gotten Sarah a wedding gift yet? Not yet, but I was thinking about getting her a personalized photo album. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm sure she'll love it. Yeah, I hope so. What about you? Have you thought of any gift ideas? Yeah, I was considering giving her a gift card to her favorite restaurant. Oh, that's a good idea too. She loves going out to eat. Have you RSVD for the wedding yet? Not yet, but I will soon. I don't want to miss it. Definitely, I can't wait to see Sarah in her wedding dress. Me too. She's going to look absolutely beautiful. It's going to be such a special day. I'm so happy for her. Same here. Weddings are always so much fun to celebrate. Yeah, I love how they bring everyone together. It's a great time to catch up with old friends too. That's so true. I can't wait to see all of our friends there. English conversation on the topic water. Hey, did you know that drinking water is really important for your health? Yeah, I know. I try to drink at least eight glasses of water a day. That's great. Water is also important for keeping your skin clear and hydrated. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, it helps to flush out toxins and keeps your skin looking healthy. Wow, I'll definitely have to drink more water then. Another good thing about water is that it can help you feel full, and prevent overeating. That's true. Sometimes I'll drink a glass of water before a meal, and it helps me eat less. Plus, drinking water instead of sugary drinks can help you cut down on calories and sugar intake. Yeah, I've been trying to cut back on soda and replace it with water. That's a good idea. It's also better for your teeth to drink water instead of sugary drinks. I didn't think about that. Thanks for letting me know. No problem. It's important to take care of our bodies. Definitely. Hey. Do you know how long you can go without drinking water? I'm not sure, 
but I think it depends on the person and the situation, generally. It's not recommended to go more than a few days without water. Wow, that's a long time. Good idea. Hydration is important for your health. English conversation on the topic university. Hey, have you started applying to universities yet? No, not yet. I'm still deciding which ones to apply to. Have you considered any local universities? Yes, I have, but I want to explore some out of state options too. That's a good idea. Have you looked into any scholarships or financial aid? Not yet, but I definitely need to. College is expensive. Yeah, it can be really pricey. Have you thought about what you want to study yet? I'm leaning towards biology or environmental science. That's cool. Are there any universities with great programs for those majors? Yeah, I've been doing some research and I have a few in mind. Did you visit any universities yet? Not yet. But I'm planning on visiting a couple during spring break. That's a great idea. It will give you a chance to see if you like the campus and environment. Definitely. I want to make sure I make the right choice. Have you talked to any current college students to ask for advice? No, I haven't. That's a good idea, though. Yeah. It can be helpful to hear from someone who's already been through the process. I'll definitely do that. Thanks for the suggestion. No problem. I wish you the best of luck in your college search. Thanks. I appreciate it. English conversation on the topic travel. Hi there. Have you been on any trips recently? Yeah. I just got back from a trip to the mountains. Oh, that sounds cool. Which mountains did you go to? I went to the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia. Nice. Did you go hiking or do any other outdoor activities? Yeah, I did some hiking and went on a scenic drive too. The views were amazing. That sounds like a great trip. I've always wanted to go there. Did you stay in a hotel or in a cabin? I actually rented a cabin for the week. It was really nice to have our own space in the middle of nature. Wow, that sounds awesome. How was the weather? It was actually pretty chilly at night. But during the day, it was perfect for hiking. We brought plenty of layers, though. Definitely a good idea. I've heard that the fall foliage in the Blue Ridge Mountains is amazing. Did you get to see any? Yes. We went at the perfect time. And the colors were absolutely gorgeous. It felt like we were in a postcard. I'm definitely putting the Blue Ridge Mountains on my travel list now. Thanks for sharing your experience. You're welcome. I highly recommend it. Do you have any trips planned? Not right now. But I'm thinking about taking a trip to the beach in the summer. That sounds like fun. Are you thinking about any specific beach? I'm considering going to Myrtle Beach, but I haven't decided yet. I've been there before, and it's really nice. English conversation on the topic transitions. Hi there. Have you heard about transitions before? No. What are they? Well, transitions are words or phrases that help connect ideas in writing or speaking. That sounds pretty useful. Can you give me an example? Of course, some common transition words include however, therefore, moreover, and in addition. They signal a shift in the direction of the conversation or story. Oh, I see. So, would you use these words in the middle of a sentence? Exactly. Here's an example. I really want to go to the beach this weekend, however. Got it. So, what about phrases? Some common transition phrases include, on the other hand, even though, and as a result, they also signal a change in direction. Thanks for explaining that. I had never really thought about transitions before. No problem. They're especially important when writing essays or reports. You want to make sure your ideas flow smoothly. That makes sense. 
I'll have to remember to use them next time I need to write something. Definitely. It takes a little practice. But soon it'll become second nature. Thanks again for the lesson. English conversation on the topic tipping. Do you usually leave a tip when you go out to eat? Oh yeah, definitely. I usually leave about 20% for good service. Same here. Although sometimes I feel like the service isn't always worth the tip. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I still like to leave a decent tip because I know the servers rely on them for their income. That's a good point. I just wish the prices were more transparent so we didn't have to calculate the tip. On top of the bill. I know, it can be confusing sometimes. But most restaurants have a calculator on the receipt that makes it easier. True. Hey, have you ever not left a tip for bad service? I have. But only when the service was really bad and the server seemed like they didn't even care. Yeah, I've done that too. It feels kind of awkward though. It can be uncomfortable. But I think it's important to let the server know when they're not doing a good job. That's true. Do you ever tip for other services like getting a haircut or taking a taxi? Definitely. I usually leave about 15 to 20 percent for those types of services too. Me too. It's important to show our appreciation for good service. Agreed. Plus, it feels good to make someone's day a little better with a nice tip. English conversation on the topic television. What kind of shows do you like to watch on TV? I like comedies and dramas mostly. How about you? I'm into action and adventure shows. Have you seen the latest episode of our favorite show? No, I missed it. What happened? Well, I don't want to spoil it for you. But let's just say there was a lot of drama and action. Sounds exciting. When can we watch it together? How about this weekend? We can get some snacks and make a day of it. That sounds great. Hey, have you heard about the new streaming service that just came out? No. What is it? It's called Superstream and it has all kinds of shows and movies from different networks and studios. That sounds cool. Is it expensive? Actually, it's pretty affordable. They have different pricing tiers depending on how much content you want access to. I'll have to check it out. I'm always on the lookout for new shows to watch. Same here. Have you seen that new show that everyone is talking about? No. What show? It's called The Watchers. It's about people who watch over the world and make sure everything is going according to plan. That sounds interesting. Is it on any of the streaming services? Yeah, it's on Superstream, actually. Perfect. I'll have to add that to my watch list. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem. I think you'll really like it. English conversation on the topic technology. Hey, have you seen the new iPhone? No, I haven't. What's new about it? It has a better camera, longer battery life, and a bigger screen. Cool. How much does it cost? I think it starts at around $700. Well, that's pretty expensive. Do you think it's worth it? Well, I really like Apple products. So I think it's worth the price for me, but it depends on what you need in a phone. Yeah, I'm happy with my current phone for now. I don't really need the latest and greatest. That's understandable. Hey, have you heard about the new smart home gadgets? No, what do they do? They can control things like lights, thermostats, and even kitchen appliances with voice commands. That sounds pretty cool. Do you have any of those gadgets? Yeah, I have a smart thermostat and it's really convenient. I can control the temperature from my phone or with voice commands. That's neat. Do you think it's safe to have all of these devices connected to the internet though? That's a good point. 
It's important to make sure you have strong passwords and keep everything updated to avoid any security risks. Yeah, I'll have to look into that if I decide to get any smart home gadgets. Definitely, technology can be great, but we need to be aware of the potential risks too. Agreed. Thanks for filling me in on all of this. English conversation on the topic success and failure. How did your job interview go? Not great. I don't think I got the job. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. Did they say why? They said they were looking for someone with more experience. That's too bad, but don't worry. You'll find something else. I know, it's just frustrating. I really thought I had a good chance. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. You'll get there eventually. I hope so. Have you ever failed at something? Of course, everyone fails at some point. But it's important to learn from your mistakes and keep trying. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for the encouragement. Anytime. And hey, have you heard back from that other job you applied for? Actually, yes. I got an email this morning and they want me to come in for an interview next week. That's awesome news. See, I told you everything would work out. Thanks for believing in me. I'm really excited about this opportunity. You should be. You're going to do great. Thanks again for your support. That's what friends are for. Let's celebrate when you get the job. English conversation on the topic stress. Hey, how are you doing? I'm okay. Just feeling really stressed lately. Oh no, is everything okay? Yeah, I think so. I just have a lot going on with work and family stuff. I know how you feel. Have you tried doing something to relax? Like taking a bath or going for a walk? Yeah, I've tried those things, but it doesn't seem to help much. Have you thought about talking to someone about it? Maybe a therapist or counselor? I don't know. I'm not sure I want to do that. That's understandable. But sometimes it can really help to talk to someone who is trained to help with stress. I'll think about it. Thanks for the suggestion. Of course, I'm here for you if you need to talk anytime. Thanks, I really appreciate that. How do you deal with stress? I like to listen to music or do yoga. It helps me relax and clear my mind a bit. That sounds nice. Maybe I'll give that a try. Yeah. Let me know if you want to try a yoga class together sometime. That sounds fun. Thanks. You're a good friend. Anytime. That's what friends are for. English conversation on the topic stories. Hey, have you read any good books lately? Hi. Yeah, I just finished reading a book called The Hunger Games. It was really good. Oh, I've heard of that one. What's it about? It's about a dystopian society where a bunch of teenagers are forced to fight to the death in a televised competition. It's really intense and action-packed. Wow, that sounds really interesting. I just finished reading To Kill a Mockingbird. Have you read that one? No, I haven't. What's it about? It's about a young girl growing up in the American South during the 1930s and dealing with issues of racism and prejudice. It's really powerful and moving. That sounds really poignant. I'll have to look into it. Do you have a favorite book of all time? Yeah. My favorite book is The Great Gatsby. It's about the American dream and the decadence of the Roaring Twenties. It's really beautifully written. Oh, wow. I've heard that's a classic. I'll have to read it sometime. Do you also like movies based on books? Yeah, I do. Have you seen any good movies based on books? Yes. I recently saw To All the Boys I've Loved Before on Netflix. It's based on a young adult novel, and it was really cute and heartwarming. Oh, I've heard of that one. I'll have to check it out. 
Do you also like telling stories or writing your own stories? I love telling stories when I was younger. I used to make up my own stories all the time. What about you? Yeah, I also like writing and storytelling. It's a great way to express ourselves and be creative. Do you have any favorite stories that you've written or told before? Yeah. I once wrote a story about a girl who went on a journey to find herself and ended up discovering her true passion. It was really meaningful to me. What about you? I once told a story to my little sister about a magical forest where all the animals could talk. She loved it and always asks me to tell it again. It's one of my favorite memories. English conversation on the topic sports. Hey, did you catch the game last night? Hi. No, I didn't. Who played? It was the Lakers versus the Warriors. The Lakers won by 10 points. Oh, cool. I'm not a huge basketball fan. But I do enjoy watching soccer. Do you like soccer too? Yeah, I like soccer. Who's your favorite team? My favorite team is the Barcelona Football Club. I've been a fan since I was a kid. That's awesome. Did you ever play soccer when you were younger? Yes. I played soccer for about three years when I was in middle school. It was a lot of fun. I used to play basketball in high school. Do you play any sports now? Not really. I don't have time between school and work. Do you still play basketball? Yeah, I play in a local recreational league. It's a good way to stay active and meet new people. That sounds like a lot of fun. Maybe I should join a recreational league too. Do you have any tips for getting started? Yeah. Just Google recreational leagues in your area and see if there are any that interest you. You can also ask around at your workplace or in your community to see if anyone plays a sport you're interested in. Thanks for the advice. I'll definitely look into it. Do you have a favorite athlete? Yeah, my favorite athlete is Lebron James. He's an amazing basketball player and also does a lot of great work off the court too. What about you? My favorite athlete is Lionel Messi. He's one of the best soccer players in the world and has set so many records. He's really inspiring. Yeah, Messi is amazing. English conversation on the topic sleep. Hey, how did you sleep last night? Hi. I slept pretty well. Thanks for asking. What about you? I slept okay, but I woke up a few times during the night. Oh no, that's too bad. Do you have any tips for falling asleep? Yes. I find that drinking some herbal tea before bedtime helps me relax and fall asleep faster. Have you tried any methods to help you sleep better? Yes, I like to read a book before bed. It helps me wind down and get sleepy. That's a good idea. Do you know how many hours of sleep we need each night? Yes, we should aim for seven to nine hours of sleep every night. It's important for our health and well-being. I definitely don't think I'm getting that much sleep each night. Yes. Try to create a relaxing bedtime routine and avoid using electronics before bed. The blue light from screens can mess with our body's natural sleep rhythms. HMM, that makes sense. I'll try to put away my phone earlier in the evening. Have you ever had any trouble sleeping due to stress or anxiety? Yes, I have. When that happens, I try to do some deep breathing exercises or meditation to calm my mind and relax my body. That's a good idea. I find that listening to soothing music also helps me relax. Do you have any favorite songs for falling asleep? Yeah, I like listening to instrumental music or nature sounds. It's really calming and relaxing. That sounds nice. I'm definitely going to try some of these tips tonight. Thanks for sharing your advice with me. No problem. Happy to help. Sweet dreams. English conversation on the topic science. 
Hi, have you learned anything interesting in science class lately? Yes, we learned about the digestive system. It was really fascinating. Oh, that sounds cool. What did you learn about it? We learned about how food travels through our body and gets broken down into nutrients. Do you know how it works? No, actually, I don't. Can you explain it to me? Sure. So, when we eat, the food goes down our esophagus and into our stomach, there. It mixes with acid and enzymes that break it down, then. The broken down food passes into our small intestine, where nutrients are absorbed into our bloodstream. And the waste goes down to our large intestine and is eventually eliminated from our body. Well, I had no idea it was such a complicated process. What other topics have you studied in science? We've learned about the solar system and the different planets in our galaxy. Did you know there are eight planets in our solar system? Yes, I do, but can you name them? Sure, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. They all have unique characteristics and atmospheres. It's really interesting to learn about them. Yeah, it really is. Have you conducted any experiments in science class? Yes. We did an experiment about how plants grow in different environments. We grew plants in different types of soil and measured their growth. It was really fun. That sounds like a fun experiment. I remember doing one in elementary school where we made a volcano erupt with baking soda. And vinegar. Yeah, I've heard of that experiment. It sounds really cool. Do you have any favorite science experiments? Yes, I like experiments that involve chemistry. I like to mix different chemicals and see what happens. That's really cool. Have you learned about the periodic table in chemistry class? Yes, I have. It's a chart that shows all the different elements in the world and their properties. Do you have a favorite element? Yes, I like carbon because it's the basis of all life on Earth. Without it, we wouldn't exist. That's really interesting. Science is really amazing when you think about it. English conversation on the topic seasons. Hello, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing well, thanks. How about you? I'm doing fine too. So, what is your favorite season? I love fall because of the beautiful colors of the leaves and the cool weather. What about you? I like summer because I love going to the beach and spending time in the sun. That sounds great. But sometimes it gets too hot during the summer, don't you think? Yes, that's true, but I still enjoy it. What do you like to do during fall? I like to go for a walk in the park and take pictures of the leaves. What about you? I like pumpkin picking and making pumpkin pies. Have you ever tried them? No, I haven't, but that sounds delicious. Maybe you can bake one for me sometime? Sure, I'd love to. Do you have any favorite winter activities? I like going ice skating and building snowmen. What about you? I like skiing and drinking hot cocoa by the fireplace. Do you celebrate any holidays during winter? Yes, I celebrate Christmas with my family. How about you? I celebrate Hanukkah with my family. It's a Jewish holiday celebrated around the same time as Christmas. That's cool. Do you have any favorite spring activities? Yes, I like going for picnics and seeing the cherry blossoms. What about you? I like going for bike rides and watching the flowers bloom. Do you have any allergies during spring? Yes, I have allergies to pollen. It can make me sneeze a lot. Oh, that must be tough. I don't have any allergies. English conversation on the topic retirement. Hey, have you thought about retirement yet? Retirement, not really. It seems so far away. 
I understand. But it's important to start planning for it early on. That's true. So, when do you plan on retiring? I hope to retire by the time I'm 65. Wow, that's still a long way off for me. What do you plan on doing when you retire? I hope to travel more and spend more time with my family. What about you? I haven't really thought about it yet. But I suppose I'd like to have the option to work part-time or maybe start a small business. That's a good idea. Have you started saving for retirement yet? Yeah, I have a 401k plan through my work. Do you have one of those? Yes, I also have a 401k plan through my work. But I also have a separate retirement savings account. That's a good idea. How much should someone save for retirement? It really depends on your lifestyle and when you want to retire. But generally, experts recommend saving at least 10 to 15% of your income towards retirement. That's good to know. I need to start saving more. Thanks for the advice. No problem. It's never too early to start planning for your future. English conversation on the topic restaurants. Hey, have you tried any new restaurants lately? Yeah. I went to this great Mexican place last week. The food was amazing. Oh, really? What was the name of the restaurant? It was called Casa Azul. You should check it out. Sounds good. Do they have vegetarian options? Yeah, they have a few vegetarian dishes on the menu. That's perfect for me. What kind of food do they serve besides Mexican? They also have some Tex-Mex dishes and some burgers and salads. Nice! Do you know if they take reservations or is it first come first serve? You can make reservations, but I think they also do walk-ins. Okay, good to know. How was the atmosphere of the restaurant? It was really nice. They had colorful decor and upbeat music playing. That sounds perfect for a date night. What about the service? Did you have a good experience with the waitstaff? Yeah. The servers were friendly and attentive. They made some good recommendations for us too. Awesome! I'll definitely have to check it out sometime soon. Do they have a website or social media page where I can see the menu and get more information? I believe they have a website and Facebook page. You should check it out. English conversation on the topic responsibility. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. How about you? I'm good. So, do you think being responsible is important? Absolutely. Being responsible is very important. It shows that you can be trusted and counted on. I agree. What are some of the things that you feel responsible for in your life? Well, I feel responsible for things like paying my bills on time completing my work assignments, and keeping my promises to friends and family. That's great! I think it's also important to take responsibility for your mistakes and learn from them. What do you think? Yes, I totally agree. It's important to own up to your mistakes and take steps to make things right. I feel like sometimes people try to avoid responsibility because they're afraid of the consequences what do you think? I think you're right, but ultimately. That's true. So, do you feel like you're responsible for other people besides yourself? Yes. I definitely feel responsible for the well-being of my family and close friends. It's important to look out for each other. What about you? Same here. It's important to take care of the people we care about. English conversation on the topic remedies. Do you have any natural remedies that you swear by? Yeah, I like to use honey and lemon for sore throats. It always helps me feel better. That's a good one. I've heard that chamomile tea can also be really soothing. Oh yeah, I love chamomile tea. It's really good for relaxing before bed. Have you ever tried using essential oils? Yeah, 
I use lavender oil for stress relief. It smells really nice and always helps me calm down. That's cool. I've never tried that before. What other remedies do you know of? Well, ginger tea can be really helpful for nausea, and peppermint oil can be good for headaches. Those are some great tips. I'll have to keep them in mind. Thanks for sharing. No problem. It's always good to have natural remedies on hand in case you need them. For sure, and it's always better to try natural remedies before resorting to medication. Definitely, but of course, if something serious is going on, it's always best to consult a doctor. Absolutely, thanks again for the advice. Of course, anytime, friend. English conversation on the topic productivity. Do you ever have trouble staying productive? Yeah. Sometimes, I find myself getting distracted by things like social media or TV. I can relate to that. But I find that having a to-do list helps me stay on track. That's a good idea. I should try that. What else do you do to stay productive? I try to break my tasks into smaller, more manageable steps. That way, it feels less overwhelming. That's smart. I always feel like I have so much to do, and I don't know where to start. Yeah, it can be tough. But you just have to take it one step at a time. I'll definitely try to remember that. Do you have any other tips? Another thing that helps me is taking breaks. I find that if I work for too long without a break, I start to lose focus. That makes sense. And what do you do during your breaks? I'll usually go for a walk or do something. That gets me away from my work area for a bit. It helps clear my mind. I should try that too. Thanks for the advice. No problem. And remember, being productive isn't about doing everything perfectly. It's just about doing what you can and making progress. That's a good way to look at it. Thanks again. You're welcome. Anytime. English conversation on the topic privacy. Do you ever worry about your privacy online? Yeah, sometimes. I try to be careful about what I share and who I share it with. That's a good approach. Have you ever had any negative experiences with someone invading your privacy? Yeah. Once someone hacked into my email account and was able to access all my personal information. That's terrible. What did you do about it? I reported it to the email provider and changed all my passwords. It was a hassle, but luckily nothing terrible came out of it. That's good. I always feel like I have to be careful about what I post on social media. Yeah. Social media can be tricky. I try not to share too much personal information or anything that could potentially be embarrassing. I try to do the same. It's important to protect our online reputation. Definitely, and it's not just about social media. We also need to be careful about who we give our personal information to. Right. I always try to make sure the website is trustworthy before giving them any sensitive information. That's a good rule to follow. We can never be too careful these days. Thanks for chatting with me about this. It's an important topic that we all need to be aware of. Of course, anytime. English conversation on the topic police. Have you ever had any interactions with the police before? Yeah, I got pulled over for speeding once. It was pretty scary. What happened? Did you get a ticket? Yeah, the officer gave me a ticket and told me to slow down. I was really nervous because I had never been pulled over before. I can imagine. I've never even gotten a speeding ticket before. Yeah. It was definitely a lesson learned. What about you? 
Have you ever had any experiences with the police? No, I haven't. But I have a lot of respect for what they do. Yeah, they have a really tough job. I wouldn't want to be a police officer. Me neither. But I'm glad that they're there to protect us and keep our communities safe. Definitely. And I think it's important to remember that the vast majority of police officers are good people who are just trying to do their job. I agree. It's unfortunate that a few bad apples can give the whole profession a bad reputation. Yeah. But I think it's important to support the good officers and work towards making positive changes in the police force. Absolutely. Thanks for talking with me about this. It's an important issue to discuss. Of course, anytime. English conversation on the topic photography. Hey, I saw some of your photos on Instagram. You're really good. Thanks, I love taking pictures. Do you like photography? Yeah, I have a camera, but I'm not very good at it. What kind of camera do you use? I have a Nikon D3500. It's a pretty basic DSLR camera, but it's great for beginners. That's cool. I just have a point and shoot camera. That's okay. You can still take good photos with it. Do you have any tips for taking better pictures? Not really. I just try to get a good angle and make sure there's enough light. What do you usually take pictures of? I love taking pictures of nature, landscapes, and animals. I also like doing portrait photography. That's awesome. I've seen some really beautiful landscape pictures before. Yeah. There's something really magical about capturing a beautiful scene and being able to share it with others. Definitely. Have you ever thought about entering any photo contests? I have. But I haven't really found any that I think would be a good fit for me. Have you ever entered any? No, I haven't. But it might be fun to try one day. Thanks for chatting with me about photography. Of course, anytime, and keep practicing. You'll get better in no time. English conversation on the topic pets. Hey, have you ever had a pet before? Yeah, I had a dog when I was younger. How about you? I have a cat. What kind of dog did you have? It was a Labrador Retriever. He was really friendly and loved to play fetch. Ah, uh, that sounds like a great pet to have. How long did you have him? We had him for about 10 years. He passed away last year and it was really sad. I'm sorry to hear that. I've had my cat for a few years now and she's become like a member of the family. Yeah, pets can definitely do that. Do you have any tips for taking care of a cat? Well, they're pretty low maintenance. Just make sure they have food, water, and a clean litter box. And don't forget to play with them too. Thanks for the advice. I've been thinking about getting a pet again, maybe a cat this time. Cats can definitely be great pets. They're really independent but can also be really affectionate. I'll have to look into it more. Thanks for the chat. No problem. Always happy to talk about pets. English conversation on the topic personality. Hey, I've been thinking about personalities lately. Do you think people can change their personalities over time? Hum, that's an interesting question. I think there are certain traits that are pretty ingrained. But I do believe people can change and grow in other areas. Yeah, that makes sense. I've definitely noticed changes in my own personality over the years. Same here. What are some traits you feel like you've developed or changed? Well, I used to be really shy and introverted. 
But over time, I've become more outgoing and confident. That's great. I remember when we first met and you were pretty quiet. But now you're always cracking jokes and making everyone laugh. Haha, <laughs> yeah, I guess I've changed quite a bit. What about you? Do you feel like you've changed in any significant ways? Definitely. I used to be really hot headed and quick tempered. But I've tried to work on my anger and be more patient and understanding. That's really impressive. It takes a lot of self awareness and effort to make changes like that. Thanks. I'm still working on it. I think it's important to keep growing and improving ourselves, both for our own sake and for the people around us. Agreed. Okay. On a lighter note, what are some personality traits you admire in others? I really respect people who are honest and dependable. And I also appreciate people who are able to stay calm and level headed in stressful situations. Yeah, those are all great traits to have for me. I really admire people who are empathetic and kind to others, regardless of their background or circumstances. I couldn't agree more. Kindness and empathy go a long way in making the world a better place. Okay, wanna grab some lunch? Yes, I'm starving. Let's go. English conversation on the topic past ability. Hey, do you remember when we used to play soccer together in high school? Yeah, those were some good times. We had a pretty solid team back then. Definitely. It makes me wonder. Do you think you could still play soccer as well as you used to? Hum. That's a good question. I haven't played in a while. But I think I could still hold my own on the field. Yeah. I think I would definitely be a little rusty if I tried to play now. But it's funny to think about how much our abilities change as we get older. Yeah, it is. But also, it's kind of cool to think about how much we've grown and improved in other areas as we've gotten older. That's true. Like, I remember when we used to struggle with calculus in high school, but now we both use math in our jobs all the time. Yeah. It's crazy to think about how much we've learned and accomplished since then, but at the same time, I still feel like I have so much more to learn. Same here. I think that's what keeps life interesting, though. Always striving to improve and learn new things. Agreed. Okay. Do you want to grab a coffee and catch up some more? Definitely. Let's go. English conversation on the topic the past. Hey, have you ever thought about what life was like in the past? Yeah, sometimes I do. It's amazing how much things have changed over the years. Yeah, definitely. What's something you wish you could experience from the past? I think it would be cool to go back to the 1960s and experience all the cultural and social changes that were happening during that time. That would be an interesting time to visit, personally. I think it would be cool to visit ancient Egypt and see the pyramids being built. Oh, wow, that would be amazing. I'm also curious about what life was like for our ancestors who lived thousands of years ago. Yeah. It's fascinating to think about how different their lives were compared to ours. Plus, they didn't have all the advanced technology we have today. That's true, but at the same time, there were probably a lot of struggles and hardships they had to deal with that we don't have to worry about as much nowadays. Yeah, that's a good point. It's important to appreciate what we have in the present and not always long for the past. Definitely, but at the same time, it's interesting to learn about history so we can better understand how we got to where we are today. For sure, okay? I think that's enough deep thinking for now. Want to grab some lunch? Sure. 
I'm hungry. Let's go. English conversation on the topic online dating. Hey, have you tried online dating before? No, I haven't. I'm not really sure how it works. Basically, you create a profile on a dating app and then you can search for other people's profiles to see if you're interested in them. Oh, I see. But isn't it dangerous to meet up with strangers online? Well, you can take precautions like meeting in a public place and telling a friend where you're going. Plus, you can talk to the person online first to get to know them a little bit before you meet up. That makes sense. But what if the person is lying about who they are in their profile? Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. You have to be careful and trust your instincts if something seems off about the person. It's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. So, have you had any luck with online dating? Yeah, actually. I've gone on a few dates with some really nice people. It can be a little overwhelming at first because there are so many profiles to look through. But it's worth it if you find someone you really connect with. That's cool. Maybe I'll give it a try to. Do you have any recommendations for a good dating app? Yeah, I've had good experiences with Tinder and Bumble. But you can also try Hinge or Occupit if you're looking for something a little more serious. Thanks for the tips. Maybe I'll give it a shot and see what happens. Yeah, you never know who you might meet. English conversation on the topic numbers. Hi there, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing great too. Thanks. Hey, do you know your phone number off the top of your head? Yeah, it's 555-1234. How about yours? Mine is 555-5678. By the way, have you ever traveled outside the country? No, I haven't. Why do you ask? Well, I was just curious about the exchange rate for different currencies, like how many yen are equal to one US dollar? Hum, I'm not sure. Maybe we should look it up. Good idea. Oh, speaking of numbers, I just got a new job and my salary is $30,000 per year. Congratulations. That's a pretty good salary for a beginner. Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, and one more thing. Can you remind me what time tonight's party is at? Sure, it starts at 7 p.m. and goes until 10 p.m. Thanks, I almost forgot. Okay. I think that's all about numbers for now. Do you want to grab lunch together? Yeah, I'd love to. Let's go. English conversation on the topic news. Did you hear about the new restaurant that just opened up in town? Oh no, I haven't. What kind of food do they serve? It's a new Italian place. They have everything from pizza to pasta. Yum, that sounds delicious. What's it called? It's called La Piazza. We should go check it out soon. Definitely. Thanks for letting me know. I also heard that. There's going to be a big festival in the park next weekend. Wow, I had no idea. What kind of festival is it? It's a music festival. There will be a lot of local bands playing. That sounds like a lot of fun. Do we need tickets to get in? No, it's actually free. We just need to bring a blanket and some snacks. Perfect. Let's plan to go together. Sounds good to me. In other news, did you hear about the new law that was just passed? No, I haven't been keeping up with the news lately. What was it about? It's a new law that requires all restaurants to use compostable takeout containers. That's really interesting. I never thought about how much waste those containers create. Yes, it's a great way to help the environment. 
Hopefully more laws like this will be passed soon. Agreed. We all need to do our part to protect the planet. Exactly. It's important to stay informed about what's happening in the world. Absolutely. Thanks for keeping me updated on all the latest news. English conversation on the topic neighbors. Hey, have you met our new neighbors yet? Actually, no. I've been busy with work. Are they nice? Oh yes, they seem very friendly. They came over to introduce themselves yesterday. That's great. What are they like? They are a young couple with a new baby. They just moved here from another city. That's exciting. Did they say where they used to live? Yes, they used to live in Seattle. They were excited to move here because it's quieter than the big city. I can relate to that. Did they mention anything else about themselves? They are both music lovers. They even mentioned starting a band one day. That's cool. Maybe we can go see them perform one day. Definitely. Oh, and they have a cute dog too. Do you like pets? Yes, I love dogs. Maybe I can take mine over to meet them. That's a great idea. They seemed very excited to meet other pet owners in the neighborhood. I'm also thinking of making them a welcome basket. Do you have any ideas? How about some freshly baked cookies? Or maybe a bottle of wine from a local winery? I like those ideas. Thanks for the suggestions. No problem. Let's plan to have them over for dinner sometime soon too. Sounds like a plan. I'm looking forward to getting to know our new neighbors. English conversation on the topic neighborhoods. Hi, have you explored our neighborhood? Not really. What places do you recommend? There are some amazing coffee shops around here. Do you like coffee? Yes, I love coffee. Which one is your favorite? My favorite is the one on Fifth Street. They have the best latte in the city. I'll definitely check it out this weekend. Also, there's a beautiful park near the river. Have you been there? No, I haven't. What's it called? It's called Riverside Park. You can walk, jog, or bike there. That sounds lovely. How do I get there? You can take the bus or a cab. It's only 10 minutes away from our place. Great. Anything else that you recommend? There's a fantastic museum near the park. They have some amazing exhibitions on display. That sounds interesting. What kind of exhibitions do they have? Currently, they have an exhibition on contemporary art. You should check it out. Thanks for the recommendations. I'm looking forward to exploring our neighborhood. English conversation on the topic natural wonders. Hi, have you ever seen any natural wonders? Yes, I have. I visited Niagara Falls a few years ago. It was amazing. What about you? No, I haven't, but I've always wanted to see the Grand Canyon. Have you been there? No, I haven't, but I've seen pictures and it looks incredible. It really does. What other natural wonders have you seen? I went to Yellowstone National Park and saw the geysers. They were really cool. That sounds like fun. Have you also seen any mountains? Yes, I've seen the Rocky Mountains. They were so majestic. I bet they were. Have you ever gone hiking in the mountains? Yes, I have. It's a great way to see the natural beauty and get some exercise. That's true. What about beaches? Have you seen any beautiful ones? Yes, I've seen some beautiful beaches in Hawaii. The water was crystal clear and the sand was so white. That sounds like paradise. What other natural wonders would you like to see? I would love to see the northern lights. They look so mysterious and beautiful. That's on my list too. Have you ever seen a rainbow? Yes, I have. 
They always brighten up the sky and make me feel happy. That's so true. Nature has a way of making us feel at peace. Let's plan a trip to see a natural wonder together. That sounds great. I can't wait to go on an adventure with you. English conversation on the topic natural disasters. Hi, have you ever experienced a natural disaster? Yes, I have. I witnessed a hurricane a few years ago. It was scary. What about you? No, I haven't, but I'm curious. What was it like? It was really windy and rainy. There were huge gusts of wind and the power went out. It was hard to sleep. That sounds terrible. Have you seen any other natural disasters? Yes, I saw a tornado once. It was far away. But it still looked dangerous. Wow, that must have been some sight. What can we do to prepare for natural disasters? We can have emergency kits with food, water, and medicine, as well as a plan for where to go and what to do during an emergency. That's a smart idea. What are some warning signs of a natural disaster? For hurricanes, they usually give warnings on the news. For tornadoes, you can see funnel clouds forming. For earthquakes, the ground shakes. I see. Do you think we can prevent natural disasters from happening? No, I don't think we can. But we can take steps to minimize the impact and be prepared. That makes sense. What about wildfires? Have you experienced one? No, I haven't. But I know they can spread quickly and be very dangerous. Right. It's important to be aware of natural disasters and take precautions. What other ways can we be prepared? We can have a designated meeting spot and a communication plan with loved ones in case we get separated. We can also keep up to date with the latest news and weather reports. Those are all great tips. Thanks for sharing your experience and knowledge with me. No problem. It's good to be prepared and informed. English English conversation on the topic music. Hi, do you like music? Yes, I do. What's your favorite music genre? I prefer pop music. What about you? I like rock music. Do you play any musical instruments? No, I don't, but I wish I knew how to play the guitar. What about you? I play the drums. It's so much fun. Have you been to any concerts recently? Yes, I went to a Taylor Swift concert last year. It was amazing. How about you? I went to a Metallica concert last month. It was crazy. Do you listen to music while studying? Sometimes, but I find it distracting. What about you? I listen to classical music while studying. It helps me concentrate. Do you have a favorite music band or artist? I really like Adele. What about you? My favorite band is Guns N' Roses. Do you know any good music apps? Yes, I use Spotify to listen to music. It has a great selection. What about you? I use Apple Music. They have exclusive content that I love to listen to. Do you know how to read music notes? No, I don't, but it looks fascinating. Have you ever tried to learn? Yes, I have. It's challenging, but it's also very fun. Do you have any music recommendations? Sure, you should try listening to Sean Mendes. He's really talented. What about you? You should listen to Led Zeppelin. They're classic rock and always sound great. English conversation on the topic marriage. Hey, have you ever thought about getting married? Yeah, I have actually. I think marriage can be a really beautiful thing. I agree. A healthy marriage is built on trust, respect, and open communication. Definitely. And it's important to find someone who shares your values and goals in life. That's true. It's also important to be willing to compromise and work through challenges together. Absolutely. 
It's not always going to be easy. But with love and commitment, a marriage can last a lifetime. I think it's also important to prioritize your spouse and make sure you're always working on the relationship. Yes, and it's important to have a good support system too. Family and friends can be a great source of encouragement and guidance. And let's not forget about the importance of taking care of yourself in a marriage. It's important to maintain your own identity and hobbies. Yes, being an individual within a marriage is important too. I think it's all about finding a balance. Agreed. So, have you found someone special yet? Not yet, but I'm hopeful. How about you? I'm actually engaged. I'm so excited to start this new chapter of my life with my fiance. Congratulations. That's so wonderful to hear. Wishing you and your fiance all the best. Thanks. I really appreciate it. English conversation on the topic medicine. Hi there. Are you feeling okay? No, I'm not. I think I caught a cold. Oh no. Have you seen a doctor? Not yet. I'm thinking of going to the pharmacy to get some medicine. That's a good idea. What are you planning to get? I'm not really sure. What do you recommend? Well, for a cold, you might want to get some decongestants and cough syrup. Okay. Thanks for the suggestion. Will those be enough? It should help with the symptoms, but it's always best to see a doctor if you're not feeling well. Yeah, you're right. I'll make an appointment tomorrow. Good idea. In the meantime, rest up and take care of yourself. Thanks. I will. English conversation on the topic meeting new people. Hi there. My name is Sarah. Nice to meet you. Hi, Sarah. I'm Mark. Nice to meet you too. So, Mark, where are you from? I'm from New York. How about you? I'm from California. What brings you here? I'm here for work. What about you? Same here. What do you do? I work in finance. How about you? I work in marketing. Do you like this city? Yeah, it's pretty nice. What about you? I like it too. Have you tried any good restaurants around here? Not yet. Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, there's a great Italian place just down the street. Want to grab dinner there sometime? That sounds like a great idea. When do you want to go? How about this Friday evening? That works for me. What time should we meet? Let's say 7 p.m. Sounds perfect. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. It was great meeting you, Mark. Likewise, Sarah. Have a good day. English conversation on the topic memory. Hey, do you remember when we first met? Yes, I remember. It was at the park, right? Yeah, we were both walking our dogs. That's right. I remember your dog was so cute. Yeah, he was just a puppy back then, but now he's all grown up. Time flies, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Do you have any other fond memories from when we were younger? Yeah, I remember when we used to ride our bikes to the ice cream shop. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. We used to get the biggest scoops of ice cream. And remember when we used to go on camping trips with our families? Yes. We would always roast marshmallows and tell ghost stories around the campfire. Those were the good old days. Do you have any favorite memories from more recent times? Yeah, when we went to that concert together and sang our hearts out to all the songs. That was so much fun. We'll have to do that again sometime. Definitely. Hey. Do you remember when we both got lost in Chicago and had to find our way back to the hotel? Oh man, that was a crazy night, but we made it back, didn't we? 
Yeah, we did. Those memories will always stay with us, won't they? Absolutely. It's amazing how memories can bring us back to those moments instantly. English conversation on the topic money. Hey, do you have any tips for saving money? Yeah, I try to make a budget for myself every month. That sounds like a good idea. How do you stick to your budget? I try to avoid impulse purchases and only buy things I really need. That makes sense. I always end up spending more than I intend to when I go shopping. It happens to the best of us. Have you tried using cash instead of credit cards? No, I haven't. Does it really make a difference? I find that using cash makes me more aware of how much I'm spending, whereas when I use credit cards, it's easier to overspend. I see what you mean. Thanks for the advice. No problem. Do you have any financial goals for the future? Yeah, I want to start saving for a down payment on a house. That's a great goal to have. Have you started saving yet? Not yet. But I'm going to start putting a portion of my paycheck into a savings account every month. That sounds like a good plan. Just remember not to deprive yourself too much. It's okay to have some fun and treat yourself every now and then. Thanks for the reminder. I tend to get a bit too obsessed with saving sometimes. It's all about finding a balance. Do you have any other questions about finances? No, that's all. Thanks again for the advice. Anytime. Let's plan a fun, budget-friendly activity together soon. English conversation on the topic movies. Hey, have you seen any good movies lately? Yeah, I just watched a really good drama last weekend. What was it called? It was called The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. What's it about? It's based on a true story about a group of protesters in the 60s. Who were arrested and put on trial for inciting a riot? That sounds really interesting. I'll have to check it out. Definitely. Do you have any favorite movies? I really like action movies. Have you seen the latest Marvel movie? Yes, I loved it. The special effects were amazing. Yeah, they really went all out with that one. What about comedies? I enjoy comedies too. Have you seen Bridesmaids? Yes, I thought it was hilarious. I also really like The Hangover. Those are both good ones. Do you prefer watching movies in the theater or at home? I like going to the theaters for the big screen experience, but I also like watching movies at home in my pajamas. Same here. Hey, do you want to watch a movie together sometime? Sure, that sounds like fun. We can make some popcorn and have a movie night. Sounds great. Let's plan for next weekend. Okay, I'll bring some snacks. What movie do you want to watch? How about a comedy this time? Do you want to watch Step Brothers? Yes, definitely. I haven't seen that one in a while. English conversation on the topic multiple intelligences. Hey, have you ever heard of multiple intelligences? No, I don't think I have. What is it? It's the idea that there are multiple ways that people can be intelligent, not just the traditional academic intelligence. That sounds interesting. Can you give me some examples? Sure. There's linguistic intelligence, which is the ability to use language effectively. There's also logical mathematical intelligence, which is the ability to reason and solve problems. And there's musical intelligence, which is the ability to understand and create music. Oh, I think I understand. Are there any other types of intelligence? Yes, there's also spatial intelligence, which is the ability to visualize and manipulate objects in space. There's bodily kinesthetic intelligence, which is the ability to control movement and coordinate the body. And there's interpersonal 
intelligence, which is the ability to understand and connect with others. Well, I had no idea there were so many types of intelligence. Which one do you think you have? For me, I think it's mostly linguistic and logical mathematical intelligence. How about you? I think I might have both spatial and interpersonal intelligence. Can people have more than one type of intelligence? Yes, definitely. Most people have a combination of several different intelligences, with one or two being their strongest. That's really fascinating. Thanks for sharing this with me. No problem. It's an interesting concept to explore and can help people better understand themselves and others. English conversation on the topic manners. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing well too. So, have you ever thought about how important manners are? Definitely. I think manners are really important in our daily lives. What about you? I agree. Manners show respect and consideration for others. For example, saying please and thank you can go a long way. Absolutely, and it's not just about saying the right words. It's about being polite and courteous in actions too. Holding doors open or offering your seat to someone in need are great examples. Yes. And it's also important to be mindful of others' cultures and customs. Different countries may have different expectations for manners. That's right. It's always a good idea to be aware of cultural differences to avoid any misunderstandings or unintended disrespect. And let's not forget about table manners. Using utensils properly and not talking with your mouth full are important things to remember. Definitely, it's important to make a good impression, especially in professional settings. Absolutely, and knowing proper manners can also make social situations less awkward and more enjoyable. I completely agree. So, let's keep on practicing good manners and setting a positive example for those around us. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for chatting with me about this. My pleasure. Have a great day. English conversation about greetings. Hi there. How's it going? Hey, not too bad. Thanks. How about you? Pretty good. Thanks. Anything new and exciting happening in your life? Not much. Just the usual daily grind. How about you? Anything interesting on your end? Well, I recently started a new job. So I've been adjusting to that. Dot. It's been a learning curve, but I'm enjoying it. That's great to hear. Congratulations on the new job. What do you do? I'm working in marketing for a tech company. It's challenging, but fun. And speaking of which, how's your job going? It's going well. Thanks. I've been busy with some new projects, but overall, things are good. Dot. By the way. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah, I did. I caught up on summer stand, spent time with family. How about you? Do anything exciting? Not really. Just took it easy and watched a movie. Sometimes a quiet weekend is nice, you know. Absolutely, Dot. Well, it's always good catching up with you. Let's grab a coffee sometime. Definitely. I'd like that. Dot. Take care. And talk to you soon. English conversation at the airport. Excuse me, could you tell me where the check-in counter for flight one to three to London is? Certainly, the check-in counter for flight one hundred twenty-three is located just around the corner to your right. You'll see the signs directing you there. Great, thank you. And after check-in. Where can I find the departure gate? Once you've checked in, follow the signs to the security checkpoint. After passing through security, you'll find the departure gates straight ahead. Flight 123's gate is usually displayed on the screens throughout the terminal. Perfect. Thanks for your help. By the way, 
Is there a currency exchange around here? Yes, there's a currency exchange kiosk near the information desk, which is on your left as you exit the check-in area. They can help you with any currency exchanges you need. Excellent. I'll make sure to stop by. What time is the boarding for flight 123? Boarding for flight 1 to 3 is scheduled to begin at 2.30 p.m. at gate 5. I recommend keeping an eye on the departure boards for any updates. Got it. Thank you so much for your assistance. You're welcome. If you have any more questions or need further assistance, feel free to ask. Have a pleasant flight. English conversation in advice. I've been feeling really stressed out lately. Work has been overwhelming, and I don't know how to manage it all. I understand. It can be tough when things pile up. Have you considered breaking down your tasks into smaller, more manageable steps? I haven't thought about that. How would that help? Breaking tasks into smaller steps makes them less intimidating. You can focus on one thing at a time, which can make the overall workload seem more manageable. It might help reduce your stress. That makes sense. I'll give it a try. Any other advice? Also, make sure to take breaks. Step away from your desk. Go for a short walk or do something you enjoy. It can help clear your mind and improve your productivity when you return. Taking breaks sounds like a good idea. I tend to work through without stopping. It's important to recharge. And don't hesitate to communicate with your colleagues or superiors if you're feeling overwhelmed. They might be able to offer support or help prioritize tasks. I guess I should be more open about how I'm feeling. It's just hard to admit when I'm struggling. It's okay to ask for help. Everyone faces challenges. And seeking support is a strength, not a weakness. Remember, you don't have to do it all alone. Thanks for the advice. I'll try implementing these changes and see how it goes. You're welcome. Take things one step at a time. And don't forget to take care of yourself. If you need anything, I'm here to help. English conversation about animals. Have you ever had a pet? Yes, I have a dog. His name is Max. He's a Labrador retriever. Labradors are great. How long have you had him? I've had Max for about five years now. He's been a wonderful companion. That's lovely. I've always wanted a pet, but haven't had the chance. What's the best thing about having a dog? The unconditional love and companionship. No matter how my day goes, Max is always there to greet me with enthusiasm. It's like having a loyal friend. That sounds amazing. What's Max's personality like? He's very friendly and playful, loves going for walks. And he's surprisingly good at fetching. What about you? Any favorite animals? I'm a cat person, although I don't have one currently. Cats seem so independent and mysterious. Cats are great too. They have their own unique charm. Do you have a favorite breed? I think I'd go for a Scottish Fold. Those cute folded ears get me every time. How about you? If you had to choose another pet, what would it be? I've always been fascinated by birds, maybe a colorful parrot. They're so intelligent and can be quite entertaining. Parrots are amazing. The way they mimic sounds and talk is fascinating. Any memorable experiences with animals? Once, I went on a safari and saw lions and elephants in their natural habitat. It was an unforgettable experience. How about you? I once went snorkeling and saw a variety of colorful fish and even a sea turtle. It felt like being in a different world. That sounds incredible. Nature is full of amazing creatures. It's always humbling to witness them in their natural environments. Absolutely. It's a reminder of how diverse and beautiful the animal kingdom is. English conversation about appearance. I love your new haircut. It really suits you. Thanks. 
I wanted a change, and I'm glad you like it. Speaking of which, you're looking very stylish today. Where did you get that outfit? Oh, thanks. I found this dress at a little boutique downtown. They always have unique pieces. It's lovely. The color really complements your skin tone. By the way, have you been working out? You look so fit. Ah, uh, thanks for noticing. Yeah. I've been hitting the gym a bit more lately, trying to stay healthy, you know. That's great. I should join you sometime. I've been feeling like I need to get back into a fitness routine. Absolutely. It's always more fun with a workout buddy. And hey, your glasses look really cool. Did you get new frames? Yes, I did. I wanted something a bit different this time. Glad you like them. Your accessories are on point too. Where did you find that necklace? Oh, this, it's a gift from my sister. She has a great eye for jewelry. It's so unique. And your shoes are adorable. Where did you get them? Thanks. I got them on sale at a shoe store downtown. They were a lucky find. Lucky indeed. I need to up my shoe game. Yours always look so trendy. Well, you know what they say shoes can make or break an outfit. Anyway, I've been meaning to ask. Have you tried that new skincare product everyone's talking about? Your skin is glowing. Oh, you noticed. Yes, I started using it recently. And I can already see a difference. It's amazing what a good skincare routine can do. I might have to give it a try. Your skin looks fantastic, overall. You're just radiating confidence today. Thank you. You're not too shabby yourself. It's always nice to boost each other up. English conversation about architecture. Have you seen the new building downtown? The architecture is stunning. Yes, I noticed it the other day. The modern design really stands out among the older structures. Absolutely. The combination of glass and steel gives it a sleek and futuristic look. Did you catch who the architect is? I think it's the work of Archie. They're known for their innovative designs. I love how they incorporate both functionality and aesthetics. That makes sense. The interior must be impressive too. I heard they used a lot of sustainable materials in the construction. That's fantastic. It's great to see architects prioritizing sustainability. It's not just visually appealing but environmentally conscious as well. Speaking of which, have you ever been to Miho Museum? The way they blend traditional and modern elements is captivating. No, I haven't been yet. I've seen pictures though. The way they play with light and space is remarkable. It's on my list of places to visit. You should definitely go. The way architecture can evoke emotions and create experiences is fascinating. I agree. It's not just about structures. It's about shaping the environment and influencing how people interact with it. Have you ever been involved in any architectural projects? Not directly, but I've worked on some interior design projects. Collaborating with architects to create cohesive spaces is always interesting. That sounds like a great collaboration. I've always been curious about the design process, from concept to execution. It's a meticulous process, considering functionality, aesthetics, and the client's vision, but when it all comes together, it's incredibly satisfying. I can imagine. It must be rewarding to see a space transform from an idea on paper to a tangible, functional environment. Absolutely, it's the blend of creativity and practicality. That makes architecture and design so intriguing. English conversation about art. Have you been to the art gallery downtown recently? They have a new exhibition that's getting a lot of attention. No, I haven't had a chance to check it out. What's the theme of the exhibition? It's a mix of contemporary and traditional art. There are some striking paintings and sculptures that explore the intersection of technology and nature, very thought-provoking. That sounds fascinating. 
I love it when artists bring different elements together. Any favorite piece? There's this abstract painting that caught my eye. The use of color and texture is mesmerizing. It's open to interpretation, which is what I enjoy about abstract art. I appreciate abstract art too. It allows for personal interpretation and emotional connection. Do they have any local artists featured? Yes, quite a few. It's great to see support for local talent. There's a section dedicated to emerging artists, showcasing diverse styles and perspectives. That's fantastic. Local art scenes often have so much to offer. Speaking of art, have you tried any art classes lately? I took a pottery class last month. It was challenging, but so rewarding. I made a few wonky-looking bowls, but it was a fun experience. That sounds like a great way to express creativity. I've been thinking about trying my hand at painting. Any tips for a beginner? Definitely start with what you enjoy, whether it's landscapes, abstract, or portraits. Find your style, and don't be afraid to experiment with colors and techniques. It's about expressing yourself. Not recently, but there's one coming up next month. It usually features a mix of visual arts, live performances, and interactive installations. It's a great way to immerse yourself in the local art scene. Good advice. I'll give it a shot. By the way, have you been to any art festivals lately? That sounds like a blast. I'll mark my calendar. Art festivals have such a vibrant atmosphere. It's always inspiring to see so many creative minds coming together. Absolutely, art has a way of connecting people and sparking conversations. It's a universal language. English conversation about beauty. I tried a new skincare routine recently, and I can't believe the difference it's made in my skin. That's awesome. What products are you using? I switched to a gentle cleanser, and started using a hydrating serum. It's amazing how a good skincare routine can boost your confidence. I've been thinking about updating my skincare routine. Any recommendations? Well, it depends on your skin type, but a good moisturizer and sunscreen are essential. Also, consider adding a vitamin C serum for a healthy glow. Thanks for the tips. I've been curious about trying new makeup looks too. Any favorite beauty trends at the moment? I've seen a lot of people experimenting with bold eyeshadow colors and graphic eyeliner. It's a fun way to express creativity. Sounds interesting. I've always stuck to neutral tones, but I might give it a try. Speaking of which, your makeup looks flawless today. What foundation do you use? Thank you. I've been using a lightweight, buildable foundation. It gives a natural finish without feeling too heavy. I need to find a foundation like that. I always struggle with feeling like my makeup is too cakey. It's all about finding the right products for your skin type. Maybe we can go makeup shopping together, Sumedmi, and find the perfect match for you. That sounds like a plan. On a different note, have you ever tried any natural beauty remedies? Yes, I love using natural ingredients like honey, and aloe vera for DIY face masks. They can do wonders for your skin. I'll have to give those a try. I've heard about the benefits of natural ingredients. By the way, your hair looks amazing. Any secrets to keeping it so healthy? Thank you. I make sure to use a good conditioner, and do a hair mask once a week. Regular trims help too to prevent split ends. Good to know. I've been struggling with dry hair lately. I'll take your advice and pamper my hair a bit more. Self care is key, whether it's skincare, makeup, or hair care. 
It's all about what makes you feel good and confident. English conversation about books. Have you read any good books lately? Yes, I just finished a novel called The Night Circus. It's a magical story with beautifully descriptive prose. I've heard about that one. The way they describe the circus is supposed to be enchanting. Would you recommend it? Absolutely. The storytelling is unique, and the characters are well developed. It's a captivating read. Nice. I'm currently into historical fiction. Have you read anything in that genre recently? Not lately. Any recommendations? I just finished the book Thief. It's set in Nazi Germany and narrated by Death. Sounds morbid, but it's incredibly moving and beautifully written. That sounds intriguing. I'll add it to my list. By the way, do you prefer physical books or e-books? I love the feel of a physical book, but for convenience, I've been leaning toward e-books lately. How about you? I'm the same. There's something special about holding a book, but e-books are so convenient, especially when traveling. True. And speaking of travel, have you ever read a book that inspired you to visit a particular place? Definitely. Eat, pray, love made me want to explore Italy, India, and Indonesia. The way the author described each location was so vivid. That's a great one. Travel memoirs can be so inspiring. I recently read Wild by Cheryl Streep, and now I'm itching to hike the Pacific Crest Trail. I've heard of that one. It's on my to-read list. Switching gears. Do you enjoy any specific genre? I'm a sucker for mystery and detective novels. The suspense always keeps me hooked. How about you? I love a good fantasy novel, The Escape into Different World, and Magical Realms is so enthralling. Have you read any good mysteries lately? Yes, I recently finished a detective series by Dan Brown. The character development and plot twist kept me on the edge of my seat. Sounds like my kind of series. I'll have to check it out. It's always great discovering new books to dive into. English conversation about brains. Have you ever been fascinated by how the brain works? Absolutely. The brain is such a complex organ. The more you learn, the more you realize how much we still don't know. True. I recently read about neuroplasticity, how the brain can reorganize itself. It's incredible how adaptable it is. Neuroplasticity is fascinating. It gives hope for recovery after brain injury. Sand suggests the potential for lifelong learning. Did you know our brains can even create new neural pathways? Yes, that's what amazed me. It challenges the old belief that the brain's structure is fixed after a certain age. It's like the brain is constantly rewiring itself based on experiences. It's like a lifelong renovation project up there. Changing topics a bit. Have you ever tried mindfulness or meditation for mental well-being? I have. It's interesting how these practices can actually physically change the brain. Studies show that regular meditation can increase gray matter in certain areas related to self-awareness and compassion. That's impressive. It's like a workout for the brain. On a different note, have you ever experienced déjà vu? It's such a mysterious aspect of how our brains perceive time. Yes, déjà vu is strange. Some researchers think it might be related to a delay in the brain processing information, causing a feeling of familiarity with a situation that's actually happening for the first time. It's one of those things that make you realize. How much we're still learning about the brain, and what about dreams? They can be so vivid and sometimes bizarre. Dreams are a mystery during REM sleep. The brain is incredibly active, and dreams might be a way of processing emotions and experiences. It's like a theater of the mind. That's a poetic way to put it. Do you think our memories are reliable? Sometimes it feels like the brain can play tricks on us. 
Memory is indeed fallible, it's influenced by emotions. External cues, and even the act of recalling a memory can alter it. It's fascinating and a bit unnerving how malleable our memories can be. True. And it explains those moments when we vividly remember something. Only to find out it never happened that way. The brain is both amazing and tricky. Absolutely. The more we learn about the brain, the more it seems like the ultimate frontier of exploration, it's the seat of consciousness. And yet, there's so much we're still discovering. English Conversation About Cars Have you seen the latest electric cars on the market? They're becoming more popular. Yes, electric cars are really taking off. The advancements in technology and the push for sustainability are driving the change. I've been considering getting an electric car. The idea of reducing my carbon footprint is appealing. Have you driven one before? I haven't, but I've heard they have instant torque. And are surprisingly quiet. Plus, the lower maintenance costs are a significant advantage. That's true. No more oil changes and fewer moving parts to worry about. It's a different world compared to traditional combustion engines. Speaking of traditional engines, do you have a favorite car model or brand? I've always been a fan of sports cars, particularly the sleek designs of some European brands. How about you? I'm more into SUVs for the practicality and extra space. Something about a road trip in a comfortable SUV appeals to me. Road trips are the best. Do you have any memorable road trip experiences? Once, I took a cross-country trip with friends. We covered so many miles and saw some amazing landscapes. It's an adventure I'll always remember. Sounds incredible. I love the freedom of the open road. Changing gears a bit, have you ever tried carpooling or ride-sharing? Yes, especially for commuting. It's a great way to save on fuel costs and reduce traffic congestion, plus, it's more environmentally friendly. Absolutely. Efficiency and sustainability are becoming crucial. Considerations in the automotive world, have you heard about self-driving cars? Yes. The idea of autonomous vehicles is both exciting and a bit intimidating. The technology is advancing rapidly, but there are still some concerns about safety and ethics. True. The thought of letting a car drive itself is a major shift in how we think about transportation. Do you think you'd trust a self-driving car? It's a tough call. I'd need to see more evidence of their safety and reliability before fully trusting them. How about you? I'm intrigued but cautious. The idea of relaxing during a long drive sounds appealing, but the safety aspect is a significant consideration. Agreed. It's fascinating to see how the automotive industry is evolving. From electric cars to autonomous vehicles, the future looks interesting. English conversation about driving. Have you always enjoyed driving? For the most part, yes. There's something freeing about being on the open road. How about you? I love it, especially on quiet roads with good music. Do you have a favorite type of road trip? I enjoy coastal drives. The combination of the sea breeze and scenic views is always refreshing. What about you? I'm a mountain roads kind of person. The twists and turns make the drive more exciting, and the scenery is often breathtaking. That sounds amazing. Do you have any favorite driving music or playlists? I love a mix of classic rock and some upbeat indie tunes for road trips. How about you? I'm into electronic music for driving. The beats seem to match the rhythm of the road, changing gears a bit. Do you prefer manual or automatic transmission? I've always driven automatic, but there's something appealing. About the control you get with a manual, have you ever driven a manual car? Yes, I learned to drive on a manual. It gives you a more connected feel with the car, I think. That's impressive. I've been thinking about learning to drive a manual for the experience. Do you have any tips? It takes a bit of practice, especially getting used to the clutch. 
find an empty parking lot to practice shifting gears and smooth starts. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes second nature. Good advice. I'll give it a shot. Speaking of which, have you ever taken a road trip with friends? Absolutely. Some of my best memories are from road trips with friends. The camaraderie and shared experiences make it special. Any memorable destinations? We once drove up the coast and camped on the beach. Waking up to the sound of the waves was unforgettable. That sounds like a dream trip. Have you ever encountered challenging driving conditions? Once, during a winter road trip, we hit a snowstorm. It was nerve-wracking, but it added a bit of adventure to the journey. Wow, that must have been intense. I've heard driving in extreme weather can be quite challenging. It definitely adds a layer of complexity, but with caution and preparation, it can still be a great experience. Do you have a dream road trip destination? I've always wanted to drive along the Pacific Coast Highway in California. The rugged coastline and ocean views seem incredible. That's on my bucket list too. Maybe we should plan a road trip together someday. Absolutely, it sounds like a plan. Road trips are always better with good company. English conversation about challenges. Have you taken on any new challenges recently? Yes, I decided to learn a new language. It's been both exciting and challenging. That's impressive. Which language are you learning? I'm tackling Spanish. It's challenging, but the goal is to become fluent eventually. That's a fantastic goal. How are you finding the learning process? It's a bit challenging to grasp the grammar rules, but I'm using language apps and practicing with native speakers, which helps a lot. Immersion is a great way to learn. I've been thinking about taking up a new hobby. Any recommendations? It depends on your interests. If you enjoy being active, maybe try hiking or rock climbing. If you prefer something more relaxing. Maybe painting or playing an instrument. I've always wanted to learn to play the guitar. It seems challenging, though. Learning an instrument can be challenging initially, but with practice, it becomes rewarding. There are plenty of tutorials online to help you get started. True, I should give it a shot. Have you faced any unexpected challenge during your language learning journey? Well, pronunciation has been a bit challenging. Some words just don't roll off my tongue the way they should, but it's all part of the process. I can imagine. Overcoming pronunciation challenges must take patience. On a different note, have you ever participated in a physical challenge like a marathon or obstacle course? I ran a half marathon last year. It was both mentally and physically challenging, but crossing the finish line was an incredible feeling. That's a significant accomplishment. I've been thinking about getting into fitness challenges myself. Any tips for staying motivated? Setting specific, achievable goals helps. It could be completing a certain number of workouts per week or improving your performance in a particular exercise. And finding a workout buddy can make it more fun and motivating. Good advice. I'll keep that in mind. It seems like challenges. Whether big or small, contribute a lot to personal growth. Absolutely, challenges push us out of our comfort zones and teach us valuable lessons. It's all about embracing the journey. Well said. Let's keep challenging ourselves and growing along the way. English conversation on the topic fast food. Hi. Do you like fast food? Hi. Yeah, I love it. What's your favorite fast food? I'm a fan of burgers and fries. How about you? Pizza is my go-to. Do you eat fast food often? Not too often. Maybe once in a while. How about you? I grab fast food a couple of times a week. It's convenient. What's your favorite place to get fast food? I like the burgers at Bite Burger. You. 
Pizza Palace is my favorite. Do you ever feel guilty about eating fast food? Sometimes, because it's not always the healthiest. How about you? Yeah, I know it's not the healthiest, but it's so tasty. What's your usual order? I go for a classic cheeseburger and fries. Can't go wrong. How about you? I usually get a pepperoni pizza, simple and delicious. Do you like any fast food desserts? I love ice cream cones. And you? I'm a fan of apple pies. They're a sweet way to end a meal. Have you ever tried making fast food at home? Yeah, I've attempted homemade burgers. How about you? I've tried making pizza at home. It's fun, but not as easy as it looks. Fast food is convenient, but it's good to balance it with healthier options, too. Absolutely. Everything in moderation. If you ever want to try some homemade fast food recipes, let me know. Sure, that sounds like a great idea. It could be a fun cooking project. English conversation on the topic fashion. Hi, do you like talking about fashion? Hi. Yeah, I'm interested. What's your style like? I like casual and comfortable clothes. What about you? I prefer a mix of casual and a bit of a trendy style. Do you follow fashion trends? Not really. I just wear what I like. How about you? I try to stay updated on the latest trends. But comfort is still important. Where do you usually buy your clothes? I often shop at local stores. How about you? I like exploring different shops, both in person and online. Any favorite colors you like to wear? I'm into earthy tones like greens and browns. What about you? I love wearing blues and grays. They go with everything. Do you have a favorite piece of clothing? I have this comfy sweater I love. What's your go-to outfit? A pair of jeans and a stylish top. Simple yet versatile. How do you dress for special occasions? I usually go for something a bit more formal, like a nice dress. And you? I like wearing a suit or a dress shirt for special events. It gives a polished look. Have you ever made a fashion mistake? Oh, plenty. Like wearing mismatched socks. How about you? Once, I wore shoes that didn't match my outfit at all. It was quite a blender. Fashion can be tricky sometimes. Definitely, but it's all part of the fun. If you ever need fashion advice, feel free to ask. Thanks. I might take you up on that. Fashion is always changing, and it's good to share ideas. English conversation on the topic family values. Hi, have you ever talked about family values? Hi, not much. What are family values? Family values are the beliefs and principles that a family considers important. They guide how they interact and make decisions. What values do you think are important in a family? I guess love and respect are important. What other values do families often have? Many families value honesty, trust, and kindness. It's about treating each other well. Why do you think family values matter? I think they create a strong foundation for the family and help everyone get along. 
How do families pass on their values? Good question. Families often talk about their values, and parents lead by example. It's about showing what's important through actions. Can family values change? I thought they stay the same. Can they really change? They can evolve over time as the family grows, and experiences new things. It's a natural part of life. How do you think family values affect individuals? I think they shape a person's character, and influence how they behave towards others. Have you ever had a discussion about family values? Yes, during family dinners. It's a time when we share our thoughts and feelings about what matters most to us. What values do you appreciate in your family? I appreciate the emphasis on supporting each other. We're always there for one another. How about your family? We value open communication. It helps us understand each other better. If you ever want to discuss family values or share stories, I'm here. Thanks. I think it's a good topic to explore. Family values make families unique and special. Absolutely, they're like the glue that keeps a family strong. English conversation on the topic family. Hi, how's your family? Hi, they're good, thanks. How about yours? Everyone's well. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have one sister. What about you? I have a brother. Do you all live together? No, my sister moved to another city for work. How about your brother? He's still at home. We get along well. What do you usually do with your family? We often have family dinners and watch movies together. How about you? We play board games and sometimes go for hikes. What's your favorite family tradition? I love our holiday gatherings. We exchange gifts and share a big meal. Do you have a family pet? Yes, we have a cat named Whiskers. She's part of the family. Do you celebrate any special occasions together? Birthdays and anniversaries are a big deal for us. We celebrate with cake and gifts. How about your family? We do the same. It's a time for joy and togetherness. What values do you think are important in a family? I think love, understanding, and support are crucial. How about you? I agree. Trust and communication are vital for a strong family bond. Any funny family stories you'd like to share? Once. During a family vacation, we got lost and ended up in a small town. It turned into a memorable adventure. How about you? We once tried cooking a new recipe together, and it didn't go as planned. We ended up ordering pizza. Family moments like that are the best. Absolutely, it's those moments that make the best memories. If you ever want to share more family stories. I'd love to hear them. Sure, and you're welcome to share yours too. Families are full of stories and laughter. English conversation on the topic facts and statistics. Hi, ever wonder how facts and statistics help us understand things? Hi, yeah, but I'm not sure how they work. What are facts? Facts are statements that can be proven true or false. For example, the Earth revolves around the Sun is a fact. Why do you think facts are important? I guess they provide accurate information. What about statistics? Statistics are numbers that help us understand trends or patterns. For instance, 90% of people like chocolate is a statistic. Why are statistics useful? I think they give a bigger picture and help us see how common. 
or uncommon something is, how can we find reliable facts and statistics? Good question. It's essential to check trustworthy sources like scientific studies or official reports. Ever heard the phrase, don't believe everything you hear? Yeah. It means we should be careful and check information before accepting it. How do you use facts and statistics in daily life? We use them to make decisions. Like choosing products or understanding news, they guide our choices. Can facts change? I thought facts were fixed. Can they really change? Facts, like scientific discoveries, can change as we learn more. It's part of the learning process. Why is it crucial to question information? I guess to make sure it's accurate and not misleading. Questioning helps us get to the truth. Have you ever been surprised by a fact or statistic? Yeah, sometimes the numbers or information can be unexpected. It's interesting how they reveal different perspectives. If you're ever curious about a fact or statistic, you can look it up or ask someone knowledgeable. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. Facts and statistics seem like useful tools for understanding the world. English conversation on the topic ethics. Hi, have you ever talked about ethics? Hi, not much. What exactly are ethics? Ethics is about deciding what's right and wrong and how we should behave. It's like a guide for good actions. Why is ethics important? I guess it helps us make fair and honest choices. But how do we know what's right? Good question. It's often about treating others well. Being truthful and doing what's fair, have you ever faced an ethical dilemma? Yeah, once at work. I wasn't sure if I should report something I saw. What did you do? I reported it. It was tough. But I felt it was the right thing to do. How can we improve our ethical decision making? Maybe by thinking about the consequences of our actions. And considering how it would affect others, can ethics be different for each person? Yes, it can vary. But there are some common principles like honesty and fairness that many people agree on. Have you ever seen a situation where someone acted unethically? Yeah. I've seen people cheat in exams. It didn't seem right. What can we do to promote ethics? Leave by example. Show others what's right through your actions. Small acts of kindness matter. Why do you think businesses talk about ethics? I think it helps build trust with customers and creates a positive reputation. So, being ethical is good for everyone. Exactly. It's good for individuals, communities, and even businesses in the long run. If you ever have questions about ethical decisions, feel free to talk to someone you trust. Thanks. That helps clarify things. Let's try to do our best to make ethical choices. English conversation on the topic environmental problems. Hi there. Have you heard about environmental problems? Hi, yes. I think it's about issues like pollution and climate change, right? Exactly. Pollution, deforestation, and global warming are some examples. Why are these problems important? They harm the Earth and affect our lives. We need to take care of our planet. How does pollution happen? Pollution occurs when harmful substances like chemicals or plastic into the air, water, or soil. It's not good for our health. What's deforestation? Deforestation is when trees are cut down in large numbers. It's a problem because trees help balance the environment. What's global warming? Global warming is the earth getting hotter. Because of too many greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, it causes climate change. How can we help the environment? We can reduce waste, save energy, and plant trees. 
Small actions like using less plastic make a big difference. Why is it crucial to protect the environment? It's our home, and if we don't take care of it, we won't have clean air, water, or a healthy planet. Have you ever done something to help the environment? I recycle and use a reusable water bottle, small steps. But they count. Do you think everyone should be involved? Absolutely. Everyone's actions, no matter how small, contribute to a healthier planet. It's a team effort. True. Let's spread the word and encourage others to take care of our home. Agreed. Every little bit helps. If you ever want more ideas on helping the environment, let me know. English conversation on the topic entrepreneurs. Hi, have you ever thought about becoming an entrepreneur? Hi, yeah, I've considered it. What exactly do entrepreneurs do? Entrepreneurs start and run their own businesses. They come up with ideas and make them happen. Sounds exciting. How do you become an entrepreneur? Well, you need a business idea, a plan, and the courage to take risks. Have you ever had a business idea? I've thought about it, but haven't come up with anything concrete. What kind of businesses do entrepreneurs start? It can be anything. Some start tech companies. Others open cafes or shops. It depends on their interests. Interesting. Is it challenging to be an entrepreneur? It can be. There are risks, and you need to work hard. But it's also rewarding. What skills do entrepreneurs need? I guess good communication, problem solving, and being creative would be important. Absolutely, and being able to adapt to changes. Have you ever met an entrepreneur? I think so. They seem passionate about what they do. Do entrepreneurs work alone? Not always. Some start solo, while others build teams. Teamwork can make a business stronger. Got it. Maybe I'll explore some business ideas. Any advice for someone starting as an entrepreneur? Start small, learn from mistakes, and stay persistent. It's a journey. If you have a passion, go for it. Thanks for the advice. I'll keep that in mind. Being an entrepreneur sounds challenging but exciting. It is. If you ever decide to start your own thing, I'm here to support you. Good luck. English conversation on the topic empathy. Hi, have you heard about empathy? Hi, yes. I think it's about understanding and sharing feelings, right? Exactly. It's putting yourself in someone else's shoes. How do you show empathy? I listen when someone talks and try to understand what they're going through. What about you? That's good. I also try to be supportive and offer help if someone needs it. Why is empathy important? It helps build strong connections with others, and makes us more compassionate. How do you express empathy in difficult situations? I might say something like, "I understand this must be hard for you. Acknowledging feelings is important. Do you think empathy is a skill you can learn?" Definitely. It takes practice, but anyone can become more empathetic by being open-minded and attentive. Can empathy improve relationships? Absolutely. Understanding each other's feelings creates trust and makes relationships stronger. Have you ever experienced someone showing empathy to you? Yes, when I was going through a tough time, a friend listened and supported me. It made a big difference. It's powerful how empathy can impact someone. Let's practice more empathy in our daily lives. Agreed. It makes the world a kinder place. If you ever need to talk, I'm here to listen. Thanks. That means a lot. Same goes for you. English conversation on the topic email. Hi there. Do you use email often? 
Hi. Yes, I use it for work and staying in touch with friends. How about you? Same here. What's your email address? It's john.do at email.com. What's yours? Mine is sarah.smith at email.com. How do you write a good email? Start with a greeting, then write your message clearly. End with a closing like best regards and your name. Got it. Any tips for checking emails regularly? Set specific times, like in the morning and afternoon, to stay organized. Good idea. I sometimes get too many emails. How do you manage that? I use folders to organize emails by topic. It helps find things quickly. Smart. What do you do if you need a quick response? I write urgent in the subject or kindly mention it in the email. People usually respond faster. Great tip. How do you attach files to an email? There's usually a paper clip icon. Click that to attach files. Easy peasy. Perfect. Thanks for the info. I want to be better at email communication. No problem. It gets easier with practice. If you have more questions, feel free to ask. Happy emailing. English conversation on the topic electric cars. Hi, have you heard about electric cars? Hi, yes, I have. They run on electricity instead of gas, right? Exactly. They're more eco-friendly. Would you consider getting one? I'm not sure. How far can electric cars go on a single charge? It depends. But many can go over 200 miles before needing to recharge. That's not bad. How long does it take to charge them? It varies. Some can charge quickly in about 30 minutes, while others take longer. Interesting. Are electric cars expensive? Initially, they can be pricier, but you save on fuel in the long run. I've got it. Do they have many charging stations? Yes, they're increasing. You can find charging stations in many places now. That's convenient. I like the idea of helping the environment. That's a great point. Electric cars produce fewer emissions, which is better for the planet. I might consider one in the future. Thanks for the info. No problem. If you have more questions, feel free to ask. Electric cars are becoming more popular for good reasons. English conversation on the topic eating habits. Hi, how's your day going? Hi. It's good, thanks. I'm just thinking about my eating habits. Oh, me too. Do you have a favorite meal? I love pasta. It's so delicious and easy to make. Nice. I tend to snack a lot. What about you? I try to have healthy snacks, like fruits or nuts. Keeps me energized. That's smart. I sometimes forget to eat breakfast. How about you? Breakfast is a must for me. Usually, I have cereal or toast with jam. I should do that too. How about drinks? What's your go-to? Water mostly. It's refreshing. I avoid sugary drinks. Good idea. I love coffee, but I'm trying to cut back on sugar. You can try it with less sugar or switch to tea. It's a healthier option. True. I want to improve my eating habits. Any tips? Just try to include more fruits, veggies, and whole grains. Small changes make a big difference. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the advice. No problem. It's all about balance. If you ever need more tips, feel free to ask. English conversation on the topic dreaming. Hi, 
Do you ever have interesting dreams? Hi. Yes, sometimes. Dreams can be weird and exciting. What do you think dreams mean? People have different ideas. Some think they reflect our thoughts and feelings. Others see them as stories our brain creates. Interesting. Do you remember your dreams often? Not always. They can be a bit fuzzy once I wake up. I get that. What's the weirdest dream you've had? Once, I was flying on a giant pizza. It was so bizarre. That sounds fun. I dream of talking animals sometimes. Cool. Dreams can be like our own little movies. Do dreams have meanings? Some people believe they do, but it's not proven. It's like our mind's way of sorting through thoughts. Got it. Can dreams predict the future? There's no scientific proof for that. Dreams are more about our thoughts and experiences. Interesting topic. Do you have any recurring dreams? Yeah, I often dream of being back in school, even though it's been years. I've had those too. So, what's your dream job? I'd love to be a photographer. Capturing moments seems amazing. Nice choice. I dream of traveling the world one day. That sounds like a fantastic dream. What's stopping you? Just need to plan and save. Dreams can come true with effort. Absolutely. Here's to making our dreams a reality. English conversation on the topic disabilities. Hi there. Do you know much about disabilities? Hello. Yeah, a bit. Disabilities are conditions that can affect people's abilities in different ways. Oh, I see. What are some common types of disabilities? Well, there are physical disabilities like difficulty moving, and invisible disabilities like challenges with learning or mental health. Got it. How can we support people with disabilities? Being understanding and patient is important. Also, making spaces accessible and treating everyone with respect. That makes sense. What's the best way to communicate with someone who has a disability? Just like with anyone else, if you're unsure, you can ask them how they prefer to communicate or if they need any assistance. Okay. Is there anything I should do? Avoid making assumptions about what someone can or cannot do. Treat them like you would anyone else. Thanks for explaining. How can workplaces be more inclusive for people with disabilities? Having accessible facilities and considering different needs, like providing screen readers for those with visual impairments, can help create an inclusive environment. Great advice. What about using appropriate language? Use person-first language, like saying a person with a disability instead of defining them by their condition. I'll keep that in mind. Anything else I should know? Just remember that everyone is unique, and it's essential to be open-minded and respectful. If you have questions, asking politely is always okay. Thanks for sharing this information. I want to be more understanding and supportive. That's fantastic. Just being open and willing to learn goes a long way. If you ever have more questions, feel free to ask. English conversation on the topic dating. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm great, thanks. Have you ever tried online dating? Yes, I have. It's a convenient way to meet new people. Cool. I'm thinking about trying it. Any tips? Sure. Be yourself and share your interests in your profile. Got it. 
What kind of things do people usually talk about on a first date? Usually, hobbies, favorite movies, or places you like to visit. Keep it light and fun. Sounds fun. And what about paying for the date? Some people like to split the bill, others take turns. It depends on the situation. Okay, thanks. What if the conversation feels awkward? Don't worry, it happens. Ask open ended questions to keep it going. Good advice. How do you know if a date went well? If you both enjoyed yourselves and laughed, it likely went well. Nice. So, when is it okay to suggest another date? If you had a good time, don't hesitate to say you'd like to see them again. All right. Thanks for the tips. Dating seems both exciting and a bit nerve wracking. It is, but just relax, be yourself, and have fun. Good luck. English conversation on the topic Happy New Year. Hi. I've heard people saying Happy New Year a lot lately. What does it mean, and how do I use it? Hi. Happy New Year is a greeting people use to wish each other well for the upcoming year. You can use it in the days leading up to New Year's Day and even a bit after. Ah, got it. So, when do people usually say it? People start saying Happy New Year on New Year's Eve, which is the night before the New Year begins. They continue to say it for the first few days of January. That makes sense. And how do I respond to someone who wishes me a Happy New Year? You can respond with thank you and a Happy New Year to you too. It's a friendly way to reciprocate the good wishes. Great! Any other common phrases or expressions related to New Year's? Yes, people often make New Year's resolutions. These are personal goals or changes they want to make in the coming year. It's also common to say cheers when making a toast, especially at midnight on New Year's Eve. Resolutions and cheers. Got it. What about fireworks and celebrations? Many places have fireworks displays on New Year's Eve. To celebrate the start of the new year, people also attend parties, watch the countdown on TV, or gather with friends and family to welcome the new year. Sounds like a lot of fun. I'm excited to experience my first New Year's celebration here. Anything else I should know? Just enjoy the festivities. And if someone wishes you a happy new year, Feel free to share your excitement and good wishes too. It's a time for joy and celebration. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for explaining. And Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Happy New Year to you too. If you have any more questions or need help with anything during the New Year season, feel free to ask. Cheers to a fantastic year ahead. English conversation on the topic Christmas. Hi, I've heard a lot about Christmas, but I'm not quite sure how people celebrate it. Can you help me understand? Absolutely. Christmas is a wonderful time of year. Many people celebrate it with their families and friends. One common tradition is decorating a Christmas tree with ornaments and lights. That sounds lovely. How do people usually spend Christmas Day? Well, on Christmas morning, families often exchange gifts. It's a time for giving and receiving presents later in the day. Many families gather for a special Christmas dinner with delicious food like roast turkey or ham. Gift exchange and a festive dinner, got it? Are there any other traditions I should know about? Yes, many people enjoy singing Christmas carols. It's a way of spreading joy and festive spirit, also. Some families attend a midnight church service on Christmas Eve. Singing carols and attending a midnight service, noted. What about Santa Claus? I've heard a lot about him. Ah, yes, Santa Claus is a big part of Christmas. According to tradition, he is a jolly man who brings gifts to children on Christmas Eve. 
Children often leave cookies and milk for Santa as a thank you. That's adorable. Anything else I should be aware of during the Christmas season? Well, many people enjoy decorating their homes with festive lights, wreaths, and stockings. It creates a warm and festive atmosphere. Also, you might see Christmas markets where you can buy handmade crafts and enjoy seasonal treats. Decorating and Christmas markets, got it? This all sounds wonderful. Any specific greetings or phrases I should use during the Christmas season? Merry Christmas is the most common greeting. You can also say Happy Holidays if you're unsure about someone's specific celebration. And don't forget to share good wishes like peace on earth or joy to the world. Perfect. Merry Christmas it is. I'm looking forward to experiencing my first Christmas celebration here. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you have any questions or need help with anything during the festive season, feel free to ask. Merry Christmas in advance. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you too. English conversation on the topic cloning. The concept of cloning is quite fascinating, isn't it? Absolutely. The idea of creating genetically identical organisms raises so many ethical and scientific questions. What are your thoughts on it? It's a double-edged sword on one hand. The potential for medical advancements and organ transplantation is exciting. On the other hand, the ethical concerns about cloning entire organisms are significant. That balance between scientific progress and ethical considerations is delicate. Have you followed any recent developments or breakthroughs in cloning technology? I read about advancements in cloning organs for transplantation. It seems like a promising avenue for addressing the organ shortage issue. That's a positive application. Using cloning for medical purposes could potentially save many lives. But I guess there's always the fear of misuse or unintended consequences. True. The ethical discussions around cloning often revolve around questions of individuality, identity, and the potential for exploitation. It's like playing with the building blocks of life. And those are significant concerns. It's not just about the science. It's about the impact on individuals and society. On a more speculative note, if you could clone anything, what would it be? That's an interesting thought. Maybe a beloved pet. If cloning were safe and ethical, how about you? I'd consider cloning endangered species. To help with conservation efforts, it could be a way to preserve biodiversity. That's a noble use of cloning technology. It could indeed contribute to ecological balance. On a different note, do you think cloning could ever be used for less altruistic purposes, like cloning humans for specific traits? It's a concerning possibility. The idea of designer babies raises serious ethical questions. About playing with the genetic makeup of humans, it could lead to a host of unforeseen consequences. Absolutely. The potential for creating a stratified society based on genetic enhancements is a troubling prospect. It's like opening Pandora's box. And once the technology is out there, it's challenging to control how it's used. The ethical guidelines become crucial. Have you ever discussed the topic of cloning with friends or in a formal setting? Yes, especially in college during ethics classes. It's a topic that sparks intense discussions. Everyone seems to have strong opinions on the matter. It's one of those topics that can lead to passionate debates. The ethical and moral implications make it a complex subject. Do you think public opinion on cloning has changed over the years? I believe so. Initially, there was a lot of fear and skepticism. But as people understand more about the potential benefits and risks, opinions may be evolving. True. Education and open dialogue are key in navigating the complexities of cloning. It'll be interesting to see how the conversation evolves in the coming years. Absolutely.
The intersection of science and ethics will continue to shape the trajectory of cloning technology. It's a field that demands careful consideration and responsible advancement. English conversation on the topic cleanliness. Keeping things clean and tidy makes such a difference, don't you think? Absolutely. It not only creates a pleasant environment, but also contributes to overall well-being. Do you have any cleaning routines or tips? I'm a fan of the clean-as-you-go approach. It helps to prevent a massive cleanup later, also. I find that setting a specific time for cleaning tasks each week keeps things in order. That's a smart strategy. Regular maintenance definitely beats a weekend of intensive cleaning. Speaking of which, do you have any favorite cleaning products? I'm a bit old-fashioned. I like using natural products like vinegar and baking soda for many tasks. They're effective and environmentally friendly. Natural cleaners are great choices. I've started using them more too. Have you ever done a major decluttering session? Yes, a couple of times. It's surprising how much stuff accumulates over time. I find it liberating to let go of things I no longer need. Decluttering can be therapeutic. It's like giving your living space a fresh start. How about public spaces? Do you think cleanliness in cities is important? Absolutely. Clean cities not only look better, but also promote a healthier and more pleasant living environment for everyone. It's a collective responsibility. True. It's something everyone benefits from. Have you ever been to a city that stood out for its cleanliness? Singapore comes to mind. The streets are immaculate. And there's a real sense of civic responsibility. It's impressive. Singapore is indeed a shining example. It shows how a collective effort can maintain cleanliness on a large scale, on a personal level. Do you find a clean workspace helps with productivity? Definitely. A clutter-free and organized workspace enhances focus and efficiency. I try to tidy up my desk at the end of each day. Smart move. It's amazing how clean and organized space can positively impact work, shifting gears a bit. Do you have any cleaning habits from your childhood that stuck with you? My mom always emphasized making the bed every morning, and I've carried that habit into adulthood. It sets a positive tone for the day. Moms know best, don't they? Making the bed is a simple yet effective way to start the day. Have you ever had to deal with a particularly challenging cleaning task? Once, I had to clean out an old, dusty attic. It was a challenge. But the satisfaction of transforming that space made it worthwhile. Attics can be tricky. It's impressive how tackling a tough cleaning task can be so rewarding. Well, here's to the joys of cleanliness and the satisfaction it brings. Cheers to that. May our living spaces stay tidy and our cleaning efforts continue to bring us peace and order. English conversation on the topic cities. Have you visited any interesting cities lately? Yes, I was in Barcelona last month. It's such a vibrant and culturally rich city. Barcelona is on my bucket list. What was your favorite part? The architecture is stunning especially Gaudi's creations like Sagrada Familia, and the food scene is amazing. That sounds incredible. I love how cities blend history and modernity. Speaking of which, have you been to any historic cities? I visited Rome a couple of years ago. The ancient ruins and the Colosseum were breathtaking. It felt like stepping back in time. Rome is like a living museum. Did you get a chance to try authentic Italian pizza? Absolutely. The pizza in Rome is unmatched. Now, I'm curious. What's your favorite city that you've visited? Tokyo left a lasting impression on me. The mix of tradition and futuristic technology is fascinating, and the street food is amazing. Tokyo is on my travel wish list. Did you explore any unique neighborhoods? Shibuya and Harajuku were highlights. The energy, fashion, 
and creativity in those areas are unparalleled. Have you ever lived in a city with a distinct culture? I spent a year in Istanbul, the blend of East and West, the markets, and the Bosphoru. It was a unique experience. Istanbul is known for its rich history and cultural diversity. Did you pick up any local traditions while living there? I got hooked on Turkish tea, and the concept of mess small dishes to share before a meal is something I brought back home. That's the beauty of living in different cities. The cultural exchange. Do you think you prefer the bustling city life or a quieter town? It's a tough choice. City life offers so much, but the tranquility of a smaller town has its own appeal. What about you? I enjoy the energy of cities, but there's something charming about smaller towns. They often have a close-knit community feel. True. And you get to know your neighbors in a way that's rare in big cities. Have you ever participated in a city's local festival or event? Yes, I joined the Holy Festival celebrations in Jaber. The colors, music, and joy were infectious. Holy in India must have been an incredible experience. Festivals really showcase the soul of a city. Any city you're eager to visit next. I've been dreaming of exploring Kyoto. The temples, gardens, and the traditional tea houses seem like a different world. Kyoto is a gem. The preservation of cultural heritage is remarkable. Well, here's to the many cities and adventures waiting for us to explore. Cheers to that! The world is full of cities, each with its own story and charm. English conversation on choices topics. Have you ever faced a situation where you had to make a tough choice? Yes, a few times. Making decisions can be challenging, especially when there's no clear right or wrong answer. How about you? Definitely. Recently, I had to choose between two job offers, each with its own set of advantages and disadvantages. That sounds like a significant decision. How did you approach it? I made a list of pros and cons for each job, considered long-term goals, and sought advice from mentors. Ultimately, I went with the one that aligned better with my career aspiration. Wise approach. It's crucial to weigh the options and consider the bigger picture. Do you believe in fate, or do you think our choices shape our destiny? I think it's a bit of both. Some things are beyond our control, but the choices we make definitely influence the path we take. How about you? I agree. While external factors may play a role, our choices and actions shape our personal journey. Speaking of choices, have you ever regretted a decision you made? Of course, there have been moments when I wish I had chosen differently. But I try to see them as learning experiences rather than dwelling on regret. How about you? Same here. Mistakes are part of life, and they often lead to valuable lessons. It's all about growth. On a lighter note, have you ever had a tough time deciding what to order at a restaurant? Oh, all the time. The struggle between going with a favorite or trying something new can be real. It's a small-scale version of decision making, but it can still be surprisingly difficult. And of course, there's the fear of food envy. Absolutely, food envy is a real concern, but it's all part of the dining experience. Changing gears a bit, do you think our upbringing influences the choices we make later in life? Definitely, our childhood experiences. Values instilled by our parents and cultural background all play a role in shaping our decision-making processes. It's interesting how our early experiences can form the foundation for the choices we make as adults. Have you ever made a spontaneous decision that turned out surprisingly well? Yes, I once booked a last-minute trip without much planning, 
It turned out to be one of the best vacations I've ever had. Spontaneity can lead to some of the most memorable experiences. It's refreshing to break away from routine every now and then. Absolutely. It adds a sense of adventure to life overall. Choices, whether big or small, shape our journey and contribute to our personal growth. Well said. Here's to making thoughtful choices and embracing the journey they lead us on. English conversation on change topics. Change is inevitable, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a constant part of life. Have you experienced any significant changes lately? Yes, I recently switched jobs. It's been both exciting and a bit challenging adjusting to the new environment. That's a big change. How are you finding the transition? It's a learning curve. But I think it's good for personal and professional growth. Change often brings new opportunities. I agree. Embracing change can lead to unexpected positive outcomes. Speaking of which, have you ever initiated a significant change in your life? Yes, a few years ago. I decided to pursue a passion project that eventually became a side business. It was a major change, but it brought a lot of fulfillment. That's inspiring. Taking the initiative to make positive changes can lead to some of the most rewarding experiences. Do you have any tips for managing change effectively? I think staying adaptable is crucial. Also, setting realistic goals and taking small steps can make the process more manageable. How about you? I've found that maintaining a positive mindset helps. Change can be daunting. But viewing it as an opportunity rather than a challenge can make a significant difference? True, a positive attitude can make the journey through. Change much smoother. Have you ever had to navigate unexpected changes? Definitely, life is full of surprises, and unexpected changes can be tough in those situations. I try to focus on what I can control and adapt to the rest. That's a good approach. It's essential to find a balance between embracing change and maintaining stability. On a broader scale, have you noticed any societal changes recently? The shift towards more sustainable practices and awareness about social issues seems to be gaining momentum. It's encouraging to see people actively working towards positive change. Absolutely. It feels like there's a collective effort to make the world a better place. Have you ever been part of a group or community that aimed to bring about positive change? Yes. I joined a local environmental group that focuses on community cleanups and sustainable living initiatives. It's fulfilling to be part of something that contributes to positive change. That's fantastic, being part of a community with shared values. Can amplify the impact of individual efforts, change, whether personal or societal, seems to be a constant journey. It is, and with each step, there's an opportunity for growth and improvement. As they say, the only constant in life is change. Well said, let's continue navigating these changes with resilience and a positive outlook. English conversation on the topic computers. Computers have become such an integral part of our daily lives, haven't they? Absolutely. It's incredible how they've transformed everything from how we work to how we entertain ourselves. Do you remember your first computer? Oh, vividly. It was a clunky desktop with a cathode ray tube monitor. The internet connection was dial up, and it felt like a luxury back then. How about you? Mine was a hand me down laptop. It was slow by today's standards. But back then, it felt like a technological marvel. Do you think the rapid advancement of technology is a good thing? It has its pros and cons. On one hand, it brings convenience and efficiency. On the other, the pace of change can be overwhelming, and keeping up with the latest can feel like a constant race. What's your take? I agree. The speed of technological progress is astonishing. But it does create a digital divide, 
Not everyone has equal access or the means to keep up. Have you ever had a memorable experience? With a computer, like a major breakthrough or a frustrating challenge. I remember building my first computer from scratch. It was both challenging and rewarding on the frustrating side. I've had my fair share of dealing with stubborn software glitches. Ever lost important data due to a computer malfunction? Unfortunately, yes, it's a gut-wrenching feeling now. I religiously back up everything, it's a lesson learned the hard way. Do you think artificial intelligence will continue to revolutionize the way we use computers? Absolutely. AI is already changing the game in various fields. From healthcare to finance, it's fascinating to think about the possibilities. Although ethical considerations are crucial, as we move forward, what's your favorite use of computers in everyday life? I love how computers have made learning so accessible. Online courses, educational apps, and even virtual reality experiences. It's like having a world of knowledge at our fingertips. How about you? I appreciate their role in creativity, especially in graphic design and music production. The tools available now allow for incredible artistic expression. Have you ever tried your hand at coding or programming? I dabbled a bit in coding, it's like solving puzzles. And there's a certain satisfaction in seeing lines of code come to life. Have you ever been amazed by a specific technological innovation? The first time I used a voice-activated virtual assistant. I was blown away, it felt like talking to the future. Technological innovation has this way of making the impossible seem routine. Any concerns about the growing influence of computers in our lives? Privacy is a big concern. The more integrated computers become in our daily activities, the more data is collected. It's essential to find a balance between technological convenience and safeguarding personal information. What do you think the future holds for computers? It's hard to predict, but I imagine more seamless integration into our daily lives. Perhaps advancements in quantum computing and further strides in AI. The possibilities are both thrilling and a bit daunting. What's your wish for the future of computers? I hope for more inclusivity and access to technology and a responsible approach to AI development. A future where the benefits of technology are shared by everyone. Here's to the ever-evolving world of computers and the exciting journey ahead. English conversation on the topic communication. Communication is such a vital part of our lives, don't you think? Absolutely, it's the thread that weaves through every interaction, connecting us in ways both subtle and profound. How do you feel about the role of nonverbal communication? Nonverbal cues speak volumes, sometimes even louder than words. A simple gesture, a facial expression, or body language can convey emotions that words struggle to express. Have you ever had a moment where a glance said more than a conversation? Oh, definitely. There have been times when a shared look with someone conveyed understanding, support, or even an inside joke, bypassing the need for words entirely. It's like a silent language we all intuitively understand. It's fascinating how much emotion can be packed into a single look. On the flip side, though, have you ever faced challenges in communication? where words just didn't seem enough. Yes, especially in moments of intense emotion or when dealing with complex situations. It's during those times when finding the right words becomes a delicate dance. And sometimes they still fall short. How do you navigate through misunderstandings and communication? It takes patience and active listening sometimes. A simple clarification or revisiting a conversation later with a calmer mind can unravel misunderstandings. The willingness to understand each other's perspectives is crucial. Have you ever had a moment where the tone of your voice changed the entire meaning of a conversation? Oh, absolutely. The tone can be a game changer. It's not just about what you say but how you say it. A kind tone can soften even the toughest message. While a harsh one can turn a simple statement into a battleground, do you think technology has 
enriched or complicated the way we communicate. Both, I think. Technology has given us incredible ways to connect across distances. But it has also introduced challenges, misinterpretations through text messages, for example, are common. Emotions can be lost in translation. How do you balance digital communication with face-to-face -face interactions? It's a delicate balance. While digital communication is convenient, I make a conscious effort to have meaningful face-to-face -face conversations. There's a depth and authenticity in personal interactions that technology can't fully replicate. It's true. There is a certain energy and connection in face-to-face -face conversations that are irreplaceable. Shifting gears a bit, have you ever been in a situation where silence spoke louder than words? Absolutely, sometimes. Silence is the most powerful form of communication. It can convey comfort, empathy, or shared grief. It's like a pause in the conversation that holds immense meaning. What role do you think empathy plays in effective communication? Empathy is the bridge that connects us. It allows us to step into someone else's shoes, understand their feelings, and respond in a way that fosters connection. It's the heart of meaningful communication. Well said. Empathy creates a space for understanding and shared emotions. It's the glue that binds us in the tapestry of human connection. Here's to the ever-evolving art of communication. Weaving stories, understanding, and connection into the fabric of our lives. English conversation on the topic color. Colors play such a significant role in our lives, don't they? Absolutely. They have the power to evoke emotions convey messages, and even influence our perceptions. Do you have a favorite color? I've always been drawn to shades of blue. There's something calming and serene about it. How about you? I'm a fan of earthy tones, like deep greens and warm browns. They feel grounding and connected to nature. Have you noticed how certain colors can affect your mood? Definitely, when I'm surrounded by bright, warm colors. It lifts my spirits on gloomy days. A splash of vibrant color can make a big difference. Do you have a favorite season based on its color palette? I love the rich, warm colors of autumn the reds, oranges, and yellows. It's like nature putting on a show before the quiet of winter. How about you? Spring's pastel colors always bring a sense of renewal. And freshness, the blooming flowers and greenery are a visual treat after winter. Do you think cultural background influences color preferences? Absolutely. Different cultures associate colors with various meanings and symbolism. It's fascinating how color perceptions can vary globally. Have you ever used color intentionally? Like in decorating your home? I'm a bit mindful of color psychology when decorating. I use calming colors in the bedroom and more energetic ones in the living spaces. How about you? I do the same. I want my home to be a reflection of my personality, and colors play a big role in that. Have you ever been to a place solely because of its vibrant colors? Yes, I visited a town known for its colorful houses. It was like stepping into a painting, and each street had a different color theme. It was magical. How about you? I once went to a colorful street market in Marrakesh. The vibrant textiles, spices, and ceramics created a feast for the eyes. Do you have a color that you associate with specific memories? The color yellow reminds me of sunny summer days during childhood. It's like a visual cue for happy memories. How about you? Deep reds remind me of cozy winter evenings by the fireplace. It's a color that feels warm and comforting. Do you think fashion trends influence color preferences? Definitely. Fashion has a way of popularizing certain colors each season. It's interesting to see how those trends can influence not just clothing, but also home decor. Have you ever tried expressing yourself through unconventional hair colors? I haven't, but I admire people who do. Hair color can be a fun and creative way to express individuality. Have you ever had a favorite color that changed over time? Yes. As a kid, I loved bright, 
full colors. But as I've grown older, I find myself gravitating more towards muted tones. It's like my taste has evolved. How about you? My preferences have shifted too. I used to prefer cool colors. But now I appreciate the warmth of earthy tones. It's interesting how our relationship with colors changes. Absolutely. It's a dynamic and personal connection that evolves with our experiences and perspectives. Cheers to the kaleidoscope of colors that make our world so vibrant. English conversation on the topic collectibles. Do you have any interesting collectibles? I've been into collecting vinyl records lately. There's something nostalgic about the analog sound, and the album artwork is often a piece of art itself. How about you? That's cool. I've been collecting vintage postcards. Each one tells a story and offers a glimpse into a different era. Do you have a favorite record in your collection? It's hard to pick a favorite, but I recently got a rare pressing of a classic rock album. The sound quality is amazing, and knowing it's a unique piece makes it special. What draws you to vintage postcards? I love the idea of holding a piece of history in my hands. The messages people wrote, the stamps, and the images capture a moment in time. It's like time travel through paper. Have you ever been to a collectibles fair or market? Yes, I went to a vinyl fair last year. The variety of records, the passionate collectors, and the chance to find hidden gems make those events exciting. Ever find a rare postcard at a market? I did. There was this hidden corner in a flea market. And I stumbled upon a box of postcards from the early 1900s. It felt like discovering a treasure trove. Do you think the value of collectibles is in the rarity or personal sentiment? It's a bit of both, I think. Rarity can add value, especially for serious collectors. But the personal sentiment attached to a collectible, the story behind it, is what makes it truly special. What's the most unique item in your collection? I have a postcard that was sent from a famous historical figure. It's not particularly rare, but knowing it was once held and written by someone of historical significance gives it a unique charm. How about you? I have a signed record from a band that has a small, cult-like following. The fact that it's signed by all the members makes it a prized possession for me. Do you display your postcards or keep them tucked away? I like to display them in vintage frames on a dedicated wall. It adds a touch of history to the room. How about your vinyl records? I built custom shelves for my records. The covers are like miniature art pieces so I like having them visible. Plus, it's easier to pick out what to play. Have you ever traded or sold any of your collectibles? I haven't sold any, but I've traded postcards with other enthusiasts. It's a great way to diversify the collection. Have you ever regretted letting go of a collectible? There was a rare record I sold a few years ago. I needed the money at the time, but looking back, I wish I had found another way. It had sentimental value too. Any collectible you dream of adding to your collection? I've always wanted to find a postcard from a significant event, like the opening day of a historic building or a famous concert. It would be like holding a piece of living history. How about you? There's a specific album from my favorite band that was released in limited numbers with unique artwork. If I could get my hands on that, it would be a dream come true. Collecting is such a journey, isn't it? It really is, the thrill of the hunt. The stories behind each piece. 
and the joy of adding something new to the collection it's a passion that keeps evolving. Cheers to the collectors and the stories their treasures tell. English conversation on the topic cooking. Hey, I've been thinking about trying my hand at cooking. Any tips for a beginner like me? That's awesome. Cooking can be a lot of fun. First things first, have you decided what you want to start with? Not really. I was thinking maybe something simple like pasta, but I'm not sure where to begin. Pasta is a great choice for beginners. How about starting with a classic spaghetti dish? You'll need spaghetti noodles, a jar of marinara sauce, and some ground beef or meatballs if you like. Sounds doable, but how do I know when the pasta is ready? Good question. You want to cook it until it's al dente, which means it's tender but still has a bit of bite to it. Follow the instructions on the pasta package and you should be fine. Got it? Now, what about the sauce? Can I use a store-bought one? Absolutely. Many great meals start with a good store-bought sauce. Just heat it up in a pan while your pasta is cooking. If you want to get a bit fancy, you can add sauteed onions and garlic to the sauce for extra flavor. Nice! That doesn't sound too complicated. Any other beginner-friendly recipes you'd recommend? Another easy one is stir-fry. You can use a mix of your favorite vegetables, some bite-sized pieces of chicken or tofu, and a simple stir-fry sauce. It cooks up quickly, and you can serve it over rice. Stir-fry sounds good. What about seasoning? I never know how much to use. It's all about personal preference. Start with a little taste and add more if needed. For pasta, you might sprinkle some grated parmesan on top. And don't forget salt and pepper to enhance the flavors. I'll keep that in mind. What basic kitchen tools do I need? For starters, make sure you have a good set of knives, a cutting board, pots and pans, and measuring cups. A spatula and some mixing bowls will also come in handy. I think I have most of those. What's the easiest thing you say for a complete beginner? Something like a simple omelette is a great starting point. You just need eggs, salt, and pepper. You can add cheese, veggies, or even some cooked ham if you like. Omelette it is. Any last-minute advice for a cooking newbie like me? Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Cooking is as much about experimenting and learning as it is about following recipes. Enjoy the process and have fun with it. Thanks for the tips. I'm excited to give this cookie thing a try. English conversation on the topic creativity. Hi there. I've been wanting to explore creativity more. Any tips for a beginner like me? Absolutely. Creativity is a wonderful journey. One simple way to start is by trying different hobbies, like drawing, writing, or even trying your hand at crafting. That sounds fun. I've always been interested in drawing. How can I improve my drawing skills as a beginner? Great choice. Start by doodling simple shapes and gradually move on to sketching basic objects. You can also find online tutorials or art classes for beginners to pick up some techniques. Got it. What if I want to express my creativity through writing? I'm not sure where to begin. Writing is a fantastic way to express yourself. Start by keeping a journal, write about your day, your thoughts, or even create short stories. It's a great way to practice and find your writing style. Journaling sounds interesting. Are there any specific writing techniques I should know as a beginner? 
Sure, you can start with free writing. Set a timer for a few minutes and write whatever comes to your mind. Don't worry about grammar or structure, just let the words flow. That sounds freeing. I'll give it a try. How about if I want to get into crafting? Crafting is a fantastic way to explore your creative side. You can start with simple projects like making greeting cards, origami, or even crafting with recyclable materials. There are plenty of easy tutorials online. Origami sounds intriguing. Where can I find simple origami tutorials for beginners? YouTube is a great resource for origami tutorials. You'll find step-by-step -step guides for various origami creations. Just start with something basic, like a paper crane, and go from there. Perfect. I'll check those out. How do you stay inspired and motivated to be creative? Inspiration can come from anywhere nature, books, movies, or even everyday experiences. Keep an open mind and don't be afraid to try new things. Surround yourself with things that inspire you. I'll keep that in mind. Sometimes I worry about not being good enough. Any advice on overcoming that? It's normal to feel that way, especially as a beginner. Remember that creativity is a journey, not a destination. Don't compare yourself to others. Embrace the learning process, and most importantly, enjoy what you're doing. Thanks for the encouragement. I'm feeling more excited about exploring my creativity now. That's the spirit. Whether you're drawing, writing, crafting, or trying something new, the key is to enjoy the process. Happy creating. English conversation on the topic customs. Hi, I'm new to this country, and I'm curious about the customs here. Can you tell me more about them? Of course. Welcome. Well. Customs are the traditional practices or ways of doing things that are common in a particular culture. For example, greetings are an essential custom. People here often shake hands and say hello when they meet. Got it. What about meals? Are there any specific customs I should be aware of when dining? Absolutely. In many places, it's common to wait for everyone to be served before starting to eat. Also. Using utensils like forks and knives is typical, though some cultures might use chopsticks. And don't forget to say please and thank you. Good to know. What about social gatherings? Are there any customs I should be mindful of? Definitely. When invited to someone's home, it's polite to bring a small gift or dessert. It shows appreciation for the invitation. Also. Making small talk and asking about the other person's well-being is considered friendly. That's helpful advice. I don't want to unintentionally offend anyone. Speaking of which, are there any customs regarding personal space or touching? Yes, that's important too. Different cultures have different comfort levels with personal space in general. It's a good idea to respect people's personal space and not stand too close. Unless you're familiar with them. Noted. I don't want to invade anyone's space. What about clothing? Are there customs related to that? Clothing customs can vary, but it's always a good idea to dress modestly, especially in formal or religious settings. For example, wearing more conservative clothing when visiting a place of worship is a common practice. I'll keep that in mind. Any other customs I should be aware of in daily life? Well, punctuality is often valued. Being on time for appointments or meetings is considered respectful. Also, standing in line and waiting your turn is a common custom in many places. Great to know. I appreciate these insights. It helps me feel more comfortable navigating the local customs. You're welcome. If you ever have specific questions or encounter something you're unsure about, feel free to ask. People here are generally understanding and happy to help newcomers. Thanks for being so welcoming and helpful. 
I look forward to embracing these customs and getting to know the community better. You're very welcome. If you have any more questions or if there's anything else I can help you with, just let me know. Enjoy your time here. English conversation on the topic the five senses. Hi, have you ever thought about the five senses? Hi, yeah. They help us experience the world. What are the five senses? They are sight, hearing, taste, touch, and smell. How does sight work? Sight lets us see colors and shapes. Our eyes capture light. And our brain turns it into images. What's your favorite thing to see? I love seeing sunsets. The colors are amazing. How about you? I enjoy seeing flowers in bloom. They're so vibrant. What about hearing? Hearing helps us listen to music and sounds. What's your favorite sound? I love the sound of ocean waves. It's so calming. How about taste? Taste lets us enjoy different flavors. What's your favorite taste? I love the taste of chocolate. It's so sweet. How does touch work? Touch helps us feel textures and temperatures. What's something you like to touch? I like touching soft fabrics, like a cozy blanket, and smell. Smell lets us enjoy scents. What's your favorite smell? I love the smell of freshly baked bread. It's comforting. Can you imagine a world without these senses? It would be so different. Senses make life rich and interesting. What's a memorable experience involving your senses? I once went to a concert, and the music was so loud and vibrant. It was a sensory feast. How about you? I went to a spice market once. The mix of scents was incredible. Our senses make life so colorful, don't they? Absolutely. They make every moment special. What's your favorite sense? I think sight. I love taking in the beauty around me. How about you? I can't pick one. Each sense adds something unique to our experiences. Let's cherish them all. English conversation on the topic food. Hi, are you a foodie? Hi. Yeah, I love trying different foods. What's your favorite cuisine? I enjoy Italian food. Pasta and pizza are my go-to. How about you? I'm a fan of Mexican food. Tacos and guacamole are the best. Do you like cooking? I do. I like experimenting with new recipes. And you? I'm not much of a cook but I can make a mean omelet. What's your favorite snack? I love popcorn. It's my movie night essential. How about you? I enjoy potato chips. Can't resist the crunch. Do you have a sweet tooth? Oh, definitely. I love chocolate. And you? I have a weakness for ice cream. Any favorite restaurant? There's a sushi place I really like. The rolls are delicious. How about you? There's a burger joint nearby that's amazing. The cheeseburgers are top notch. Do you have any food allergies? Fortunately, no allergies here. How about you? I'm allergic to nuts so I have to be careful. What's your favorite drink? I enjoy a good cup of coffee. And you? I'm a tea person. Green tea is my favorite. Any memorable food experience? I once tried authentic Thai food and the flavors were incredible. How about you? I had the best seafood on a beach vacation. Fresh and delicious. Food brings people together 
doesn't it? Absolutely. Sharing a meal is a special way to connect. If you ever want to try a new restaurant, I'm up for it. Sounds great. Exploring new food spots is always fun. Let's plan something soon. English conversation on the topic free time. Hi, what do you like to do in your free time? Hi, I enjoy eating and playing video games. How about you? I like going for walks and watching movies. Do you have a favorite book or game? My favorite book is Harry Potter. And I love playing Minecraft. What about you? I enjoy classics like Pride and Prejudice. And I play chess for fun. How do you spend your weekends? I usually hang out with friends or relax at home. What about you? I often visit family and sometimes explore new places. Do you have any hobbies? I like painting and playing the guitar. Hobbies are a great way to unwind. What's your favorite movie genre? I love comedies. Laughter is the best way to relax. How about you? I enjoy action movies for the excitement. Do you prefer indoor or outdoor activities? I like a mix of both. Outdoor activities on sunny days and cozy indoor activities when it's cold. How about you? I lean towards indoor activities. But I like the occasional outdoor adventure. What's the most relaxing thing you do in your free time? Taking a warm bath and listening to music is my go-to for relaxation and you. I find sitting by a window with a good book incredibly relaxing. It's a nice escape. Do you have a favorite season for free time activities? I love summer for outdoor activities. But winter is perfect for cozy indoor hobbies. How about you? I enjoy fall. The weather is just right. Not too hot or too cold. Free time is precious, isn't it? Absolutely. It's the time to do what makes you happy. If you ever want to try a new hobby together, let me know. That sounds like a plan. Exploring new activities with a friend would be fun. English conversation on the topic friendship. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm good too. Do you have many friends? Yeah, I have a few close friends. How about you? I have one best friend. We've known each other for years. That's nice. What do you like doing with your friends? We enjoy going to movies and trying new restaurants. What about you? I like playing games and chatting with my friends. What makes a good friend? Someone who listens and supports you, I think. How about you? I agree. Trust and understanding are important. Have you ever had a disagreement with a friend? Yes, but we talked it out and worked things through. How about you? Yeah, it happens. Communication helps. What's your favorite memory with a friend? Probably a road trip we took together. How about you? I remember a surprise birthday party my friends organized for me. It was amazing. Do you have friends from different cultures? Yes, I do. It's interesting to learn about different traditions. How about you? Not yet, but I'd love to make friends from around the world. What do you think makes a lasting friendship? Trust, loyalty, and shared experiences. How about you? I think understanding and being there for each other. No matter what, friends make life more enjoyable, don't they? Absolutely. They add so much joy and support. If you ever want to meet my friend, let me know. 
Sure, I'd love to meet them. Friends are like family you choose. English conversation on the topic fruits and vegetables. Hi, what's your favorite fruit? I like apples. What about you? I love oranges. Do you eat vegetables too? Yes, I do. I like broccoli and carrots. How about you? I like salad with lettuce and tomatoes. Have you ever tried a kiwi? Yes, I have. They're delicious. What about pineapples? I love pineapples, especially in smoothies. Do you have any favorite recipes using fruits or vegetables? I like making stir fry with a lot of vegetables like peppers, onions, and broccoli. What about you? I love making fruit salads with all kinds of fruit. Do you think it's important to eat fruits and vegetables every day? Yes, it's important for your health. They have a lot of vitamins and nutrients. That's true. I'll have to remember to eat more fruits and vegetables. Thanks for chatting with me about this. You're welcome. It was nice talking to you too. English conversation on the topic future. Hi, what do you think the future will be like? I don't know, but I hope that things will get better for everyone. Me too. Do you think we'll have flying cars and robots like in the movies? Maybe someday. But I think that we'll have new technologies that we can't even imagine yet. That's true. Do you think people will still use cash or will everything be digital? I think that digital payments will become even more common. But there will still be some people who prefer cash. That makes sense. How about jobs? Do you think there will be new types of jobs or will robots take over? I think that there will be new jobs that we can't even imagine right now and while robots will replace some jobs, they will also create new ones. That's a good point. What about the environment? Will we be able to fix the damage that we've done? I hope so. I think that we'll have to work together as a global community to make it happen. I agree. Do you think we'll be able to visit other planets someday, like Mars? That's definitely a possibility. But it will require a lot of innovation and hard work to make it happen. I hope I get to see it in my lifetime. Do you think we'll ever find a way to cure diseases like cancer? I think that we're making progress every day. And someday there will be a cure, but it will take time and a lot of research. I hope so. How about education? Do you think there will be new ways of learning in the future? I think that technology will play a bigger role in education. And there will be new ways to learn that we can't even imagine. That's exciting. Do you think we'll still have schools and universities, or will everything be online? I think that there will still be physical schools and universities, but online learning will become more common. I can see that happening. What do you think the world will be like in 100 years? That's hard to say, but I hope that it will be a more peaceful and prosperous place for everyone. Me too. It's exciting to think about all the possibilities for the future. Yes, it is. I'm optimistic about what the future holds. And I think that we'll be able to overcome any challenges that we face. That's a great attitude. Thanks for chatting with me about the future. No problem. It was nice talking to you too. English conversation on the topic games. Hi, John. Do you like playing games? Yes, I do. I love playing video games. 
What kind of games do you usually play? I usually play action and adventure games. That sounds cool. Have you ever played any sports games? Yes, I have played soccer games a few times. Do you prefer single player or multiplayer games? I like both, but playing with my friends is more fun. I agree. What's your favorite game? My favorite game is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. What about you? I like playing strategy games. And my favorite game is Age of Empires. That's a great game. Do you play on a console or computer? I play mostly on my computer. How about you? I play on my PlayStation. Have you ever tried virtual reality games? No, I haven't. Have you played any VR games? Yes, I tried one last year, and it was really cool. Sounds interesting. I might try one soon. You should. It's a whole different experience. English conversation on the topic getting a job. Hello, can I help you? Hi. I'm looking for a job. Great. What kind of job are you interested in? I'm not sure yet. Do you have any suggestions? Well, we have several positions available, such as customer service, sales, and administration. Do any of those interest you? I think I would be good at customer service. That's great. Can you tell me a little about your experience in that area? I don't have any professional experience, but I have helped customers before at my previous job. Okay, that's a good start. We will also need you to be comfortable using a computer. Do you have any experience with that? Yes, I'm familiar with Microsoft Office and using email. Excellent. We have an opening for a customer service representative that requires those skills. Would you like me to email you the job description and application? Yes, please. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Let me know if you have any questions. English conversation on the topic glasses and contacts. Hey, where did you get those nice glasses? Oh, I got them at the eyeglasses store down the street. Do you wear contacts too? No, I don't like putting things in my eyes like that. I prefer contacts. They're more convenient for me. I guess it's just personal preference. Do you wear them every day? Yeah, I wear them to work and when I go out, I hate wearing glasses. I wear my glasses all the time. My vision is pretty bad. And glasses are just easier for me. Have you tried contacts before? Yes, but they made my eyes really dry and uncomfortable. That's too bad. I find them really comfortable once you get used to them. Maybe I'll try them again in the future, but for now, I'm sticking with my glasses. Whatever works best for you. English conversation on the topic habits. Do you have any good habits that you do every day? Yeah, I always make my bed when I wake up in the morning. It helps start my day off right. That's a good idea. I always feel more productive when my bed is made. Exactly. Do you have any good habits? Well, I had to exercise every day, even if it's just a little bit. That's great. Exercise is so important for staying healthy. Yeah, and it helps with my energy levels too. What else do you do? I also try to drink a lot of water throughout the day. It keeps me hydrated and helps with digestion. I should do that too. I always forget to drink enough water. 
It's easy to forget, but it's so important. What about bad habits? Do you have any of those? Let's just say, it definitely eat healthier. Same here, it's hard to resist junk food sometimes. Yeah, and I also spend way too much time on my phone. I know what you mean, it's important to take breaks and disconnect sometimes. Maybe we should both try to do that more often. Good idea. Let's work on developing some better habits together. English conversation on the topic having children. Hi, have you ever thought about having children? Yes, I have, but I'm not sure if I'm ready yet. That's understandable. It's a big decision. What are your concerns? Well, I'm worried about the responsibility of taking care of a child. It seems like a lot of work. It definitely can be, but it can also be very rewarding. There's nothing like the love of a child. That's true, but what if I'm not a good parent? Just like any other skill, parenting can be learned, and there are plenty of resources available to help you along the way. I guess that makes sense. What about the cost of raising children? It can be expensive, but there are also ways to save money. Plus, the happiness and joy you get from having a child can be priceless. I see your point. How did you know you were ready to have kids? For me, it just felt like the right time. My partner and I both wanted children and felt emotionally and financially stable enough to take on the responsibility. That makes sense. Did you have any difficulties getting pregnant? Actually, my partner and I struggled with infertility for a while, but we eventually sought medical help and were able to conceive our two children. I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm glad it worked out for you. Did you have to make any major lifestyle changes once you had kids? Definitely. Our lives completely changed once we had children. We had to adjust our schedules, routines, and priorities, but it was all worth it. I can imagine. What about your career? Were you able to balance your work and family life? It was definitely a challenge, but with support from my partner and my employer, I was able to make it work. It takes some juggling, but it's possible. That's good to know. How did your family and friends react when you told them you were planning to have kids? They were all very happy for us. Having a child is a big life milestone, and it brings a lot of joy to those around you. I can definitely see that. How do you handle disciplining your children? It's important to be consistent with rules and consequences, but also to be understanding and compassionate. Disciplining should be about teaching, not punishing. That's a good point. What about the emotional toll of having children? Can it be difficult to balance your own needs with your child's? It can be a challenge, but it's important to take care of yourself as well. It's okay to ask for help or take a break when needed. I see. I'll definitely have to think more about whether having children is the right choice for me. Take your time. It's a big decision and it's important to make sure it's the right one for you. English conversation on the topic health. Hi, how are you feeling today? Hi, I'm feeling a bit sick. I have a headache and a sore throat. Oh no, have you seen a doctor? Not yet. I was hoping it would get better on its own. I think it's better to see a doctor, especially if it's been bothering you for a while. You're right. I'll make an appointment today. That's a good idea. Do you want me to drive you to the doctor? That's very kind of you, but I can drive myself. Thank you for offering, though. Sure thing. Do you need any help getting ready for your appointment? No, I think I'm okay. I just hope they can help me feel better. I'm sure they will. In the meantime, 
Drink lots of water and get plenty of rest. Will do. Thanks for your help, Amy. No problem. Take care of yourself and let me know if you need anything else. English conversation on the topic history. Hi, have you ever been to a historical site before? Yes, I've been to a few. I really enjoy learning about history. That's great. What's been your favorite historical site to visit? I really enjoyed visiting the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. It was really inspiring. That's a fantastic site. Have you ever been to any museums or exhibits about history? Yes, I've been to a few. The exhibits at the Smithsonian Museum of American History were really interesting. Oh, that's on my list of places to visit. What's the oldest historical site you've been to? Probably the Pyramids of Giza in Egypt. They're over 4,500 years old. Wow, that's amazing. Have you learned any interesting historical facts recently? I recently read about the ancient Chinese civilization and how they invented paper over 2,000 years ago. That's really cool. I've also learned about how the Greeks invented democracy over 2,500 years ago. Yes, the ancient Greeks were very innovative. Have you ever been to Greece to see any of their historical sites? No, but it's also on my list of places to visit. I hope to go there someday. Definitely go if you can. The history there is amazing. I will. Thanks for sharing your historical experiences with me, Bob. English conversation on the topic hobbies. Hello, what are your hobbies? Hi, I like to read books and watch movies. What about you? I enjoy playing sports and cooking. That sounds fun. What kind of sports do you play? I like to play basketball and soccer. Oh, I used to play soccer too. Do you watch any sports on TV? Yes, I like to watch basketball games. Cool. What do you like to cook? I like to cook Italian food, like pasta and pizza. Yum! That sounds delicious. Have you ever tried making homemade pasta? No, I haven't. How do you make it? Well, first you need to make the dough and then roll it out into thin sheets before cutting it into the desired shape. That sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, it can be, but it's worth it. What's your favorite book or movie? My favorite book is To Kill a Mockingbird, and my favorite movie is The Shawshank Redemption. What about you? I really like The Great Gatsby and The Godfather. Have you seen those? Yeah, I've seen The Godfather, but haven't read The Great Gatsby yet. You should definitely read it. It's a great book. Do you have any other hobbies besides sports and cooking? Hmm, not really. What about you? I also like to go for walks and explore the outdoors. That sounds nice. I should try that sometime. Yeah. It's a great way to relax and enjoy some fresh air. English conversation on the topic holidays. Hi, have you gone on any holidays recently? Hi there, yes. I went on a trip to Hawaii last month. It was amazing. Oh, wow. What did you do there? I went to different beaches, went snorkeling, and tried a lot of Hawaiian food. That sounds fun. I've never been to Hawaii before, but I'd like to go someday. You definitely should. It's a beautiful place. What about you? Have you gone on any holidays lately? Yeah, I went to New York City over the summer. It was really busy, but there was so much to see and do. That's cool. Did you get to see any famous landmarks? Yeah, I went to the Statue of Liberty and the Empire State Building. Nice. 
Did you try any famous New York foods like pizza or hot dogs? Yeah, I had some really good pizza and a hot dog from a street vendor. Yum, I've heard the pizza is really good there. Do you have any other holiday plans coming up? Not yet, but I'm thinking about going to the beach for a weekend getaway. That sounds nice and relaxing. Where are you thinking of going? I haven't decided yet, but maybe somewhere in Florida. Florida is great for beaches. Have you been there before? Yeah, I went to Disney World a few years ago, but didn't have time for the beach. Well, you should definitely try it out this time. Do you like to swim in the ocean or just lay on the beach? I like to do both. I like to swim and cool off in the ocean, but I also like to relax and read a book on the beach. Sounds perfect. When are you thinking of going? Maybe in a few weeks if I can find a good deal in a hotel. Good luck with that. I hope you have a great time. English conversation on the topic homes. Hi, how's your new home? Hey, thanks for asking. It's great. We love the neighborhood, and the house itself is perfect. That's great to hear. Is it a big house? It's not huge, but it's big enough for our family of four. It has three bedrooms and two bathrooms. Nice. Did you have to do any renovations or fix anything when you moved in? Not really. The previous owner had done a lot of updates, so it was move in ready. That's always a plus. Do you have a favorite room in the house? Yes, definitely the living room. It's so cozy, and we spend a lot of time in there as a family. Sounds nice. Do you have any plans to decorate or personalize the house more? Yeah, we're planning on doing some painting and putting up some pictures and decorations. We want to make it feel more like our own. That's a good idea. What's your favorite thing about the neighborhood? Definitely the friendly neighbors. Everyone we've met so far has been very welcoming and kind. That's important. Is there anything you don't like about the house or the neighborhood? Well, it can get a bit noisy sometimes because we're close to a busy street, but it's not too bad. Yeah, that can be a downside sometimes. Do you have a backyard or any outdoor space? Yes, we have a nice backyard with a patio and some trees. It's great for the kids to play in. That sounds perfect. Have you explored the area much yet? Yeah, we've checked out some local restaurants and shops. There's a great park nearby too. That's awesome. Do you have any tips for someone looking to buy a new home? I would say definitely take your time and don't rush into anything. Look at lots of houses and neighborhoods to find the right fit for you. And make sure you get a good home inspection before you buy. Good advice. Thanks for chatting with me about your home. It sounds lovely. English conversation on the topic hotels. Hi, do you have any available rooms tonight? Yes, we do have some available rooms for tonight. How many people are in your party? It's just me and my wife. Great, we have a standard room available with a king-sized bed. Would you like that? Yes, that sounds good. How much does it cost? It costs $100 per night plus tax. That's a bit expensive for us. Do you have any promotions or discounts available? Yes, we have a special promotion right now. If you stay two nights or more, you'll get a 10% discount on the total price. That sounds great. We'll take the room for two nights then. Okay, I'll just need your name and credit card information to make the reservation. Sure, my name is John Smith, and my credit card is Visa. The number is 12345678901234561. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Your reservation is confirmed for two nights in a standard room with a king-sized bed. 
Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's all. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy your stay. English conversation on the topic human wonders. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our tour of the human wonders of the world. My name is Emily, and I'll be your guide for today. Are you all excited to learn about some amazing people? Yes, we are. Great. Our first stop is to meet a man who can run faster than anyone else in the world. His name is Usain Bolt, and he's from Jamaica. He's broken many records and won many gold medals in the Olympics. Wow, that's amazing! Yes, it is. Our next stop is to see a woman who has climbed the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. Her name is Junko Tabe, and she is from Japan. She was the first woman to ever climb Mount Everest. That's incredible. Yes, it is. Our final stop is to meet a man who can hold his breath underwater for over 20 minutes. His name is Herbert Nitsch, and he is from Austria. He's a world champion freediver and holds many world records. How is that even possible? I know it seems impossible, but there are many amazing people in the world with incredible talents. I hope you all enjoyed our tour of the human wonders of the world and learned something new today. Yes, we did. Thank you for the tour. You're very welcome. Safe travels. English conversation on the topic humor. Hi, do you like jokes? Yes, I love them. What's your favorite kind of joke? I really like puns. What about you? I like silly jokes that make me laugh, like knock-knock jokes. Want to hear a pun? Sure, hit me with it. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good one. Okay, here's one for you. Why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. That's great. You've got a talent for jokes. Ah, oh, thanks. I just love making people laugh. What about you? Yeah, laughter is the best medicine. They say. I always feel better after a good laugh. English conversation on the topic idols. Hey, have you ever heard of idols? Yeah. I love K-pop idols. What's K-pop? K-pop is Korean pop music. It's very popular in Asia and other parts of the world. That's really interesting. Who's your favorite idol? I am an army, so my favorite idol is BTS. They're very talented and have amazing music. What's so special about BTS? Well. They have amazing choreography and their music has meaningful lyrics. They also have a great message about self-love and acceptance. That sounds really cool. Are they really popular? Yes, they are one of the most famous K-pop groups in the world. They have fans from all over the world, including in the United States. Interesting. How many members do they have? They have seven members: RM, Jin. Suga, J-Hope, Jimin, He and Jungkook. Each member has their own unique personality and talent. Wow, that's a big group. Do they all sing and dance? Yes, they are all very skilled at singing and dancing. They also write their own music, which is really impressive. I'm starting to get interested in this K-pop thing. Do you have any recommendations for some good songs? Definitely. You should listen to Dynamite, Butter, or Permission to Dance. They're all very catchy and fun. Thanks for the recommendations. I'm going to give K-pop a try. No problem. I'm sure you'll love it just as much as I do. 
English conversation on the topic individuality. Do you think it's important to be unique? Definitely. Everyone is different in their own way, and that's what makes us special. I agree. But sometimes it can be hard to be different when everyone else is trying to fit in. That's true, but it's important to stay true to yourself. Don't change who you are just to fit in with others. I guess that's easier said than done. I've always been a bit of a people pleaser. It can be tough, but it's worth it in the end. Being true to yourself will make you much happier than trying to please others. You're right. Is there anything I can do to embrace my individuality more? Definitely. Try doing things that make you happy. Even if they're not what everyone else is doing, pursue your passions and interests. That's a good idea. I've always been interested in art. But I've never pursued it because I was afraid of what others would think. That's too bad. You should definitely go for it. Who knows? Maybe you'll discover a talent you never knew you had. You're right. I think it's time to start embracing my individuality more. Thanks for the encouragement. No problem. Just remember that being yourself is the most important thing you can do. Don't let others dictate who you should be. English conversation on the topic intelligence. Do you think intelligence is important? Yes, I do. Being intelligent can help you in many areas of life. Like school, work, and even in your personal relationships. I see your point. But what about people who aren't as naturally intelligent? Intelligence isn't just about being naturally smart. It's also about working hard and learning new things. That's true. But it seems like some people are just born with greater intelligence than others. While that may be true to some extent, everyone has the potential to be intelligent. It just takes practice and dedication. I guess that makes sense. Are there any specific ways you can become more intelligent? Definitely. Reading books, taking courses, and engaging in critical thinking are all great ways to improve your intelligence. That's good to know. I've been wanting to learn more about a specific topic, but I wasn't sure where to start. That's a great place to start. Finding something you're interested in and learning more about it is a great way to improve your intelligence. Thanks for the advice. I think I'm going to start reading some books on the topic I'm passionate about. That's a great idea. Just remember. Intelligence isn't just about what you know. It's about how you use that knowledge to make a positive impact in the world. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks again for the advice. English conversation on the topic first impression. Hi. Have you ever thought about the importance of first impressions? Hi. Yeah, I think they matter. What do you think creates a good first impression? A friendly smile and a confident greeting usually do the trick. How about you? I agree. Politeness and good body language are key. Do you get nervous about making first impressions? Sometimes, especially in new situations. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, meeting new people can be a bit nerve wracking. What's something you do to make a good first impression? I make sure to maintain eye contact and listen actively. How about you? I try to be genuine and show interest in the other person. What do you think is a common mistake in first impressions? Coming across as unfriendly or not making eye contact can be a mistake. What's your take? Talking too much about oneself without listening is a common error. Do you think appearance matters in first impressions? It can play a role. Dressing appropriately for the situation helps. How about you? I agree. A neat appearance can create a positive impression. Have you ever had a memorable first meeting?
Yes, I met my best friend for the first time in a class. And you? I had a great first meeting with my future boss at a job interview. What advice would you give for someone making a first impression? Smile, be yourself, and show genuine interest in the other person. And you? I'd say be polite and don't forget to make a little small talk. It breaks the ice. First impressions are important, but remember, they're just the beginning. English conversation on the topic investing. Hey, have you ever thought about investing your money? Not really. I'm not sure how it all works. It can be a bit intimidating at first, but it's worth looking into. You can earn money by putting your money into stocks, bonds, and other investments. That sounds interesting, but isn't it really risky? I don't want to lose all my money. It can be risky, but there are ways to minimize risk. For example, you can invest in index funds, which are a type of mutual fund that tracks a broad market index and spreads your investment across many different companies. Um, that sounds better. How do I get started? The first step is to open a brokerage account. You can do that online or through a bank or investment firm. And then what? Once you have an account, you can start researching different types of investments and deciding how much money to put into each one. That sounds like a lot of work. Can't I just hire someone to do it for me? You can hire a financial advisor or use a robo advisor, which is an online service that uses algorithms to create and manage your investment portfolio. Okay, I'll have to think about it. Thanks for explaining it to me. No problem. Investing can be a great way to grow your wealth over time. Just remember to be patient and do your research. English conversation on the topic jobs. Hey, have you found a job yet? No, I'm still looking. It's been tough. Yeah, the job market can be competitive. Have you tried checking online job boards? I have. But it seems like all the good jobs require so much experience. That can be frustrating, but don't give up hope. You could consider taking an internship or volunteering to gain more experience. That's a good idea, but what if I don't know what I want to do? You could try taking a career assessment test or talking to a career counselor. They can help you figure out your strengths and interests and suggest careers. That might be a good fit. Okay, I'll look into that, but what if I have a job interview? I'm nervous about that. Just be yourself and do your research on the company beforehand. Look up common interview questions and practice your answers. And don't forget to dress professionally. Thanks for the advice. I hope I can find something soon. Me too. Just keep applying and networking. And something will come up eventually. I'll remember that. Thanks again. English conversation on the topic learning English. Hey, I heard you're learning English. How's it going? It's going okay. But it's hard to remember all the new words and grammar rules. Yeah, it can be challenging. Have you tried watching English movies or TV shows to help with your listening skills? No, but that sounds like a good idea. Do you have any recommendations? Sure. I would suggest starting with something like Friends or The Office. They're funny and easy to understand. Okay, I'll check them out. What about speaking? I'm nervous about practicing with native speakers. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Practice makes perfect. You could try finding a language exchange partner or joining an English conversation group. That's a good idea. But what if I don't understand something someone says to me? Don't be afraid to ask for clarification. Most people are happy to help. And you can always use a translation app or dictionary if you need to. Thanks for the advice. I'll keep studying hard and practicing my English.
That's the spirit. Just remember. Learning a new language takes time, but it's worth it in the end. English conversation on the topic love. Hey, have you met anyone special lately? Yeah, actually I did. I met someone online and we've been dating for a few weeks now. That's great. How did you meet? We matched on a dating app and started chatting. We hit it off right away. That's awesome. What do you like about them? They're funny, kind, and we have a lot in common. We both love hiking and trying new foods. Sounds like you found someone special. Have you thought about saying I love you yet? Not yet. It's still early in the relationship. But I really like them a lot. That's understandable. Just take your time and enjoy getting to know each other. Thanks, I will. But I'm a little nervous about introducing them to my family. They're from a different culture than me. Don't worry too much about it. Just be honest and open with your family and show them how happy you are. That's good advice. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for listening. Of course, I'm always here for you. Just remember, love is a wonderful thing and it's worth taking a chance on. English conversation on the topic luck. Hey, do you believe in luck? I'm not sure. Sometimes it seems like things just work out for some people and not for others. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I think luck is also about creating opportunities for yourself. That's a good point. But what about things that are out of our control, like winning the lottery? Winning the lottery is definitely a stroke of luck. But it's also important to remember that money doesn't necessarily make you happy. That's true. But it would be nice to not have to worry about bills and stuff. Yeah, it can be stressful. But I think it's important to focus on the things you do have control over, like your attitude and work ethic. I see what you mean, but what about bad luck? Like when things just keep going wrong. It can be tough, but I think it's important to keep a positive attitude and keep trying. Sometimes challenges can be opportunities in disguise. Thanks, that's good advice. I'll try to keep that in mind. No problem. Just remember, luck may play a role in our lives. But ultimately, we are in control of our own destinies. English conversation on the topic luxury items. Hey, have you seen those new designer bags that just came out? No, I haven't. Are they really that great? They're amazing, but they're also super expensive. How much are we talking? Thousands of dollars. Wow, I could never afford something like that. Yeah, me neither. But it's fun to dream, right? I guess so. But do you really think it's worth it to spend so much money on a bag? I think it depends on the person. Some people value luxury items and are willing to pay a premium for them. I see what you mean. But for me, I'd rather spend my money on things that are more practical. That's a good point. But sometimes it's nice to treat yourself to something special. Yeah, I can see that. But I think as long as you're not going into debt or living beyond your means, it's okay to splurge on something you really want once in a while. Agreed. Life is about balance, right? Exactly. So, are you thinking about buying one of those bags? Maybe one day, but for now, I'll just admire them from afar. English conversation on the topic the internet. Hey, do you know much about the internet? Yeah, I use it all the time. What do you want to know? Well, sometimes I have trouble finding what I'm looking for. Have you tried using search engines like Google or Bing? Oh, yeah, I've heard of those. I guess I just didn't know how to use them properly. Yeah, they can be really helpful. Just type in what you're looking for and hit search. That sounds simple enough. How about social media? Do you use that a lot? Yeah, I have accounts on Facebook 
Instagram, and Twitter. It's a great way to keep in touch with friends and family. I've heard about those too, but I'm not really sure how they work. It's pretty easy. You create an account, and then you can post updates, photos, or messages. And you can follow other people to see what they're doing too. Oh, that sounds interesting, but is it safe? I've heard about hackers and stuff. Yeah, there are risks involved. But you can protect yourself by using strong passwords and being careful about what information you share online. Good to know. Thanks for the advice. So, what else can you do on the internet? Well, there's online shopping, watching videos, playing games, and even taking courses. Wow, the internet really is a powerful tool. I think I need to learn more about it. Definitely. There are plenty of resources out there to help you get started.